And we are live. Hey, everybody. This is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing a live workshop brought to you by our good friends over at StreamYard. Uh, go ahead and get them in the description down below. They are our premier sponsor here. And the reason that we can simulcast to YouTube.com, Kick.com, Twitch.com, X.com, formerly Twitter, LinkedIn Live, and Facebook com as well. So today we're going to be diving into something really interesting. We're going to be diving into setting up your own membership website. <clears throat> so this one is more of a monetization and business building stream for all of you versus a strictly YouTube related stream. So excuse me, what we're going to do is we're going to open up um, the back end of my own <clears throat> website that I use for my memberships. We're going to be looking at Kajabi here real quick. So I'm going to open that up. So for those of you who may not be familiar, um, I run a membership website called awesomecreatoracademy.com. It's also where I sell my digital products. This is going to be kind of the example that we use. I'm going to show you the back end of um, what I set up for my membership. I'm going to show you Kajabi, which is what I use to build my digital products and build my membership. It's linked in the description down below. They are not a sponsor, but that is an affiliate link. So you can sign up for a free trial using my link, and that will get me a small commission. But I am also one of their featured uh, case studies, and we did a panel together at Vid Summit talking about uh, memberships. So one of the things I want to just show you up front is how much I make per month for uh, my memberships. Um, I believe that this is worth um, <clears throat> 80 active subscriptions on my membership, and that is um, $4,298 of monthly recurring revenue for my memberships. Kajabi gets to show me those numbers. And then it forecasts that uh, at this rate in six months, it believes that I'll be making over 5,000 there. So again, that just depends on how many people sign up for Awesome Creator Academy, um, which is uh, $59 a month. I'm gonna talk about pricing. Simple version of pricing for a lot of you uh, is to charge either 19, 29, um, 59, or $99 a month for your memberships. And I'm gonna tell you why. If you charge $19.99 or you charge $29.99, your sales pitch becomes, hey, I know that I can give you more than a dollar a day in value. So that's the easy sales pitch if it's $29 or under. So that's why $19 and $29 is a really easy sales pitch for a lot of you on the value of a membership website. Now, the other reason you're going to do a membership website instead of doing a Patreon or doing YouTube memberships is because when you do your own membership, what you need to realize is that even though Kajabi in this case is like um, $119 a month <coughs> making a minimum from the membership alone, $4,000 a month, if you set yourself up to where having even a handful of members would easily pay for your membership, you go to profitability rather quickly with your first five to 10 members. So unless you're afraid that you can't sit, get five to 10 members, there's no reason to be afraid of paying for a membership website like Kajabi, especially since you get the first 30 days free. So 30 days is your opportunity to set up your website, sprint and get your first memberships that will pay for that second month by getting five, 10 people to sign up early, even if it's signing up at a discount. Um, early on, I used to charge 29. I now charge 59 and I'll show you like what uh, people get for that and why I set up my pricing. But again, the pricing I think most of you should be using is either 19 or 29. If you feel, okay, I can create a dollar a day in value, easy sales pitch. Or if you go 39 or 59, you can say, look, I know I can create more than $2 a day in value for you. And then 99 is $3 a day in value. So that's the sales pitch and the breakdown on the pricing. And that's a really easy way for you to figure out how to pitch your pricing to your members. <clears throat> yep. So <clears throat> what I 
am looking at when it comes to this is also I want to show you guys what you have to do to basically build out a membership website. But a lot of it will come down to things like your overall um, offer. Primary example, you can do multiple offers. Um, I have multiple products. We'll get into that in a minute. But the main one is the Academy membership. Um, since I've been doing that for about five years, um, if the monthly pro group membership that's 59 is generated about 125,000 in revenue, but we used to have old early beta members <clears throat> and that generated 40,000. And then we have people who've done yearly in the past and that has generated 14,000. So we've done very good with the membership. So that's generated probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 $80,000 in revenue, roughly, if I had to guess about 170, 180,000. The YouTube starter kit is a standalone product that I sell as a digital download product. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with the YouTube starter kit and the templates. So that one is has generated um, 1600 plus sales over the years and over $100,000 in revenue. So again, you can see for yourself in my dashboard that I am a successful six-figure a year entrepreneur. Um, I am getting new purchases and generating sales um, with this. And so basically we need offers, which are our packages that we set up, whether it's our membership or our digital downloads or our coaching, whatever. I don't currently have courses. I'm working on courses. Uh, but when we set up that offer in Kajabi, and then we build out our product. That's kind of the first step. Then you need to have your leads. You can use your social media, your email list, and your landing pages for leads. And I'll show you how my landing page works. Um, basically, this one is my website page. Let's go to the landing page for the group membership so I can show you how you would go about selling something like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still a little sick. So you want to build a landing page that tells people what they get. If people join the Awesome Creator Academy Pro Group, they get two weekly live office hours calls, access to our members only downloads and content. And I tell them that they get structure, support, strategy, and systems for success. So then I have a video that plays that I filmed back and it pitches them on the Academy Pro Group. Now, in my case, <clears throat> they get access to my membership group, but I did something recently that actually helps a lot. Now, I'm not recommending all of you do this, but the way I did it was I decided to create all access and give everyone access to all of the digital download products that we have. Some of these are exclusive to where people can't even buy them publicly. Like no one can buy the affiliate uh, marketing launch pad, not yet anyway. We're going to rebrand that actually to make it an affiliate marketing starter kit for $99. One day people will be able to buy that. Um, but, you know, these other products, a lot of them people could buy but we give people access to all of our digital products as long as they're a member, kind of like how Adobe does. But unlike Adobe, people can buy ours and they can <clears throat> um, buy those and own those permanently if they want to. And so what we do is we give them the membership options of either uh, a monthly member or a yearly membership. So they can do that either way. We explain what they get and what to expect how often the calls are. We tell them about getting questions answered. We give some background on me as a coach. Plus we tell them what else they get. Now, what we did is since we don't have like an official course, we do have a hundred hours of um, exclusive video training. So we made sure that those benefits are highlighted here. We also made sure to highlight uh, my co-instructor, um, Andy Rivera, so that they know that they have uh, two coaches. They have me and they have someone else who is a strategist in branding and design and also offers a female perspective in case that's something that would be a value add to someone. So um, we make sure that we outline the experience and give as many um, answers as possible. We tell them how they would access the private Facebook group. We tell them how to cancel. We explain who's this for. Uh, in this case, I tell people that, hey, if you don't at least have a thousand subscribers, probably not for you. Just watch my free content. And we answer whether I um, offer one-on-one -one coaching. So we made a very thorough landing page for our membership. And this is what we drive traffic to. And this is where uh, people ultimately buy. Now, if they decide that they're going to buy, and they click on this, they'll go to a checkout page. And then the checkout page basically reiter reiterates what they're getting. <clears throat> and then they can check out. 
they can put in a coupon code if they had one. This doesn't have a coupon running. And they can use PayPal or Stripe to check out. They can use their credit card, bank card, PayPal, so on and so forth. They can also subscribe to our email list and complete their purchase. So you ultimately need a landing page and a checkout page for your product offers. And then ultimately when that succeeds, someone will go into the back end and they will get access to um, our product. And I'm looking for, ah, here it is. So here is preview mode and here's what they would get. They'd get access to this um, dashboard that then tells them how to join the private Facebook group and request access in the um, section here. They get um, the ability to go and download the member's handbook. We made a handbook for our membership, which I think is really smart to tell people instructions like how to cancel and what to do. So we have all this so they can download the members only handbook, which is a PDF. <coughs> Excuse me. We um, tell them about the 100 hours of training. And basically, we list out everything that they can do with those 100 hours of training. It's different sections. So if they go here and they click on training, it breaks out a new tab and has the member's handbook and instructions. But then um, if they go into the 13 sections for the 100 hours of training for creators, um, there's um, over 100 hours of training here that they can go through. These sessions can be anywhere from one to two hours individually. We also have some other sections here that are specific to individual platforms. We have um, some business stuff here. We also have our PDF library as well. And so then they can go through these individual uh, PDF libraries that where they would um, access these frameworks and download them. So there's a download feature here. And then when you click on this, it brings up the PDF and you would download it to your system. So it'll bring up the save file there. So basically we, we give a ton of value here and we tell people exactly what it is that they're looking for and we allow them um, to do that. So if they specifically are trying to grow their YouTube channel faster, they get access to this. And then these are videos that we have set up in terms of these training webinars. And so you can see this is an hour long video on watch time and retention that they can watch specifically. So that's the ultimate setup. Kajabi has unlimited video hosting. Like I told you, I've linked to Kajabi in the description down below for you. And so this is the back end of my awesome creator Academy. And this is, you know, why um, people buy it. Now, one of the other benefits we have is we have a private Facebook group. Now, some other people, what they'll do is they'll have a discord server or something else. Um, so would you recommend a membership website over Patreon? Overwhelmingly for me, if you care about money, yes, long term. My reasoning for this is I'd rather pay money up front than pay a percentage of my profits. With I'll give you a primary example. <clears throat> Excuse me. With Kajabi, I'm paying like um like with Kajabi, I think I pay fifteen hundred dollars a year or something, right? Fifteen hundred dollars a year. But if I had to give YouTube 30% of what I make, they'd be getting $30,000 a year. If I had to give Patreon 12%, they'd be getting $12,000 a year. So I'd rather pay upfront money to have my own membership website than give up a percentage of my profits. Because with this, between payment processors and everything, I'm giving up like 1.5% of my profits by paying for it instead of giving up a fraction of revenue. I'd rather give 1.5% of my profits like even up to 2% of my profits instead of doing Patreon, giving up 8%, 12%, YouTube, 30%, Twitch, 50%. That's why for me, membership websites make the most sense because I own everything. Um, I also am not beholden to platforms. Patreon has taken people down and said, hey, we don't agree with your content. And they have content policies that are similar to YouTube. So depending on what you're doing or what your public persona is, you may not want to be with a Patreon. No offense to them. I love Jack Conte as an entrepreneur and a founder. But again, uh, Patreon is just like platforms in many ways. Um, I'd rather pay up front for a service, have a web hosting service, have uh, my own membership website, have everything built out, control the customization, control the experience, control every aspect of it, and um, not have to have similar rules to um, YouTube 
and social media platforms and also not give them a percentage of the revenue. I'd rather just be a paying customer than give up a percentage of revenue. Um, Clever Tax says, yeah, by not doing all of the above, regardless of what you're leaving potential money on the table. Um, yeah, usually. Um, again, the main thing that you get to have with a membership website is one, I get to have a custom look and feel and domain name. I own everything. It's all mine. And then on the back end, like I said, I have great uh, data reporting and analytics. I can control everything. Um, I get to keep the money. And just remember, if I go into the back end here, and we look at sales, here's the reality. The reality is if we look at sales in the lifetime of um, me being with Kajabi, <clears throat> excuse me, in the lifetime of me being with Kajabi, I've made over $500,000 in sales. And that's over the last uh, five and a half years, almost six years. So lifetime sales I go to analytics and we go to lifetime sales instead of just um, 30 day sales. Give me a minute here. Yeah, if we go to lifetime sales, I've done 500, $562,841 in change. Now I want you to imagine if I had to give up 30% to YouTube or 12% to Patreon. If I gave up 12% of this money to Patreon, like let's just round it. Like if I gave up 12% of this money to Patreon, I would have given $67,000 to Patreon instead of keeping it. If I dealt with YouTube and I dealt with um, the membership side of YouTube, I would have given up $169,500 of my revenue instead of me just having that. So um, for me, it's much better to just pay because um, in five years, by paying about roughly $1,500 a month for the five years, I only gave up $7,500. It's not even close. So I wouldn't miss it. <clears throat> the other thing is with Patreon, it's cookie cutter. Like um, Jack is saying, you can't really control the user experience. I control the user experience. I also have all this great insights and data. So... Um, with this, I have a tremendous amount of data that I get to use. And I actually have direct access to my customers because I have an email list. And so that's incredibly useful and powerful for me. But also I get um, these insights in terms of this data and it breaks it down for me. So the thing is I get to see some really good insights and data um, so I have uh, almost 5,000 contacts, but I have 3,000 customers. Those are my customers. My goal is to have 10,000 customers, actually. I would love for more of you to become my customers, actually. Um, whether you join the membership or you just buy one of our like affordable products, we have some entry-level products. They should be linked in the description of the video. If they're not, I'll go ahead and link to some of our products over there. But you can also just go to awesomecreatoracademy.com and you can buy anything we sell over there. We have even we have even some $9 products to help people uh, just getting started. So we even have some beginner friendly products. Uh, we have um, 57 new customers in the last 30 days. We have 124 new contacts. So again, I have all of these insights into um, my customers and it's very valuable to me. <clears throat> and then I have healthy versus cold contacts and so on and so forth. So this is incredibly powerful and helpful in terms of the information that it gives me when it comes to my membership website and having that set up. And Kajabi provides all of that. Now on the back end for the marketing, the thing is I get to set up my landing pages which um, then build out my um, sales funnels. So if we go and if we look at some of my um, landing pages for my sales funnels, we can look at something like, for example, um, probably pull up like the brand deal starter kit. Um, let's see. Brand deal starter kit. Okay, so this one has had 22,000 hits. Uh, we've had, I think, over 300 sales or pretty close to 300 sales. So that's actually pretty good for the amount of hits. Um, for this, I, I wonder if it tells me 
what it has. So um, it has a decent conversion rate. It has a very decent conversion rate uh, for what it is um, in terms of this is the number of hits to the page. This is how many people get to the offer page for checkout. <coughs> then this is how many conversions, almost 300 conversions. And then that's the amount of revenue that that end up generating. So um, pretty good stuff there. That's pretty reasonable, all things considered. So very good conversion rate on <clears throat> that overall. Now, in terms of designing a landing page, um, when we go into Kajabi, we get to use no code tools and we get to build out a landing page. So this is how you're going to <clears throat> get your customers. Like if you were driving people from your YouTube channel, your email list or your social media to your website, you send them to specifically this landing page with your product. And so we use no code tools in Kajabi to be able to design and set this up. So I did this myself and then I used placeit.net to with Photoshop, Photoshop and placeit.net to make the mock-up graphics. So then that's how I assembled all of this to make um, the branding work. And then we edited everything in these sections and then we laid out what people get. So like with the brand deal starter kit, it's a $99 product. You get our 100 sponsor master list. So you know who sponsors content creators, three customizable media kits, um, 10 email swipe files. Actually, I think that's actually 12 now. If I wanted to edit that, I could. Um, and just go into the text editor here. <clears throat> so could edit that and say 12 email swipe files. And then I could just save that, click save. Um, I can fix this typo right here and then I can save there. So you can see we can edit this with our no code tools. So that's very convenient. We can even preview what this looks like on mobile devices instead of just um, desktop devices. And we can edit accordingly to try to make sure that's a good mobile experience as well. So we have all of these really great tools in Kajabi. I obviously put together something that lets them know, hey, um, this is who I am as um, your, you know, um, the person you're buying from. So we give some background there. <clears throat> and so then if we go to the preview page of what this will look like for a regular user experience, boom, you get to see what the experience is on desktop. And so that is our landing page for our digital product. And then if they clicked on this, they would go to the offer page, which is the second part of the funnel, which you saw in our design. And then it's a checkout page where they can put in a coupon if they have it. Uh, we also do an order bump where it's like, hey, maybe you want to do coaching with me. So we do a 30 minute coaching call order bump so that if they clicked yes on this, the order bump would then change the price because then they're getting a channel review also. So that's a way to encourage more sales is the order bumps. So you do the offer page. You probably want to insert some kind of order bump for a second offer. And you want to describe, again, what they are getting in this so that, you know, okay, this is what to expect. This is what I'm getting. If they have a coupon code, they can apply it. If they um, are a previous customer, they can log in. And so that allows you to set up and sell. Um, let's go with this super chat. Charlotte Ann Moore says, I know you're a fan of Kajabi. I'm just getting started and it's kind of pricey. Would you recommend Kartra until I hit the 100 subscribers number? Thanks. Um, I mean, if you buy a system, you should probably stick with that system instead of trying to move people over to a new system. So the reason I recommend Kajabi is, and I recommend the free trial and then say, okay, get people to sign up to your thing and it will pay for itself. And then you have 30 days. It takes you about a week to put together your landing page and your offer if you go in with a plan. So in 30 days, you can have your offer and your membership set up and you could try and get those people signed up and get some customers so that it pays for itself. Because again, if you sign up with Kartra, Teachable or whatever, it's going to be really hard to get all your customers to move over to Kajabi later. It's also going to be a pain in the butt for you. If you sign up for something and you start paying for it, you're kind of locked in. This is kind of where it's like, okay, I don't have a lot of budget, so on and so forth. This is why the 30-day free trials matter, because you might as well in for a penny, in for a pound, and make the commitment. The other thing is, to be fair, the pressure that comes from 
the pressure that comes from being set up. Now, again, if you're really new and you don't even have any leads or social media um, built up to get leads, then that's different. Or if you don't have the budget to run ads to get leads, then that's different, right? But <clears throat> if you have viewers, subscribers, an email list, a following on Twitter, Facebook group, or whatever, you should be able to get leads, and then this thing can pay for itself. Because once you're locked in, there's no point in really switching systems. So you should get the system that you think is going to work best for you. Again, the one I want to recommend is Kajabi. And the good news for all of you is I'm happy to do tutorials and walk through around the systems that I use so that you know how to use them, just like how I'm doing here. And I'm showing you the back end of mine and how I use it. So again, in these this funnel, we can edit our landing page, but we also can go ahead and edit our offer page at checkout to make sure the information is consistent. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's what this looks like. And again, um, no code tools here. So we write a description for it. We let people know. We can even set up the access date. We can even set up um, the post-purchase actions, like again, taking them directly to the product. We can set up a custom email that gives them instructions that they get. We can even set up automations to, um, you know, tag people under specific conditions. So again, um, set our pricing, set up our graphics, all these things. And like I said, all with no code tools. But yeah, it's a great question. Um, you said your niche is true crime. Can you say what your strategy would be for that? As nice as it would be to have a membership website, if you're a true crime channel, you're much more of an entertainment channel. And I don't see a private membership website working out as easily for you under your true crime brand. You're probably going to, even though you end up giving up a portion of your revenue, what's more suitable for you because of how your audience is going to be, your audience isn't the membership website type. They're going to sign up for Patreon to support you or they're going to sign up for YouTube channel memberships. And while it sucks that you're giving up 12 to 30% of your revenue, that's kind of where you are because that audience just won't sign up for a membership website, not for what you're offering as a true crime channel. Now, if you ever expanded your brand and you had another show or you had something different to offer, maybe, just maybe, they would sign up for something like that and that that would be different and it would make sense and it'd be worthwhile. But I don't think... Um, um, Trayana, that a membership website that you fully own will work for you if you're in the entertainment true crime niche, because I just don't see those being a buying audience that way. <clears throat> for someone like Grande Photography, it would make sense because you could also sell digital products as a photographer and it would make sense. And as a photographer, it makes sense to be an instructor, a teacher, have a membership. It would make sense. Um, I just didn't know when the point would be to start asking your community to pay. You can always start building the back end of the content before publishing. Yeah, um, in terms of getting your community to pay, the thing is a lot of you are underestimating that there might be some actually affluent people in your audience. You might be just seeing the hyper vocal broke people in your audience and not realizing there are people willing to pay. Again, I have a large subscriber base, but I have like 80 something members paying for Awesome Creator Academy. But the 80 something members for Awesome Creator Academy or $4,200 um, a month, over four grand a month. The it takes hundreds of thousands of views and it also takes super chat support for me to get to that on a quarter million views watching on YouTube. So a quarter million viewers could watch on YouTube and that's only worth the same amount as 80 people who are truly dedicated. So, I mean, there's the massive discrepancy there in terms of the people who um, are willing to pay. It's going to be a very small segment of the audience for a lot of people um, that are willing to pay. but they will be the more affluent of your audience. There are people who have spent um, thousands of dollars with me over the years, but that's because I gave them the opportunity. I would have never been able to monetize them that way on YouTube. And even if I did, YouTube would have got 30%. Stefan V. Tran asks, if you use Kajabi for external offers, exclusive content and memberships, and our channel memberships still valid somehow, maybe for personalization during live streams? Yes, they're valid for that, and they're valid for a lower tier offer for your community. 
<coughs> primary example, something I'm going to do for channel members here on the YouTube channel is I'm going to be breaking down uh, some case studies on creators and putting that for members only. And that's something that the $5 people that only want to support me with $5 a month can get on YouTube channel memberships because they can't afford $59 a month to join Awesome Creator Academy. I can still do something for my YouTube channel members that's easier than what I do for Awesome Creator Academy because with Awesome Creator Academy, I'm doing two office hours a week with me and Andy. I have to pay Andy's uh, salary. I have to pay Ariana's salary for help with the back end of that. Um, so I have two people that help me with Awesome Creator Academy and I pay their salary. So that is why that's, you know, valuable. The other thing is there's products we sell and there's different things. Not everyone's going to be able to afford that. The YouTube channel membership and the $5 YouTube channel membership exist for people who cannot pay the money. And so I can give them something small there that they can afford. So that's why even if you have a membership website, YouTube channel memberships or Twitch or whatever could still be valuable. Um, there's there's an extra layer of effort there, but it's a smaller layer of effort by comparison. So the thing is you can have low ticket and high ticket YouTube and channel memberships on YouTube and Patreon, low ticket. That's for people who can only spend five to $10 a month for you. And then if you want to have your own membership website, that's for people that are going to be paying 19, 29, 59 and $99 a month. And also I would pair the membership stuff with, standalone transactions where people can um, buy something. <clears throat> so again, a lot of this is much more suited to some of you who sell something or your educators. For entertainers, this is not going to be as viable if entertainment is the only thing in your brand, if it's the only thing in your brand. Now, there are entertainment channels have that have also moved on to offering some kind of service because they have some kind of ability. So consider that. <clears throat> so yeah for so for a lot of you um you know it doesn't work as much for you to um have something like this <clears throat> grande photographer says how do you decide what is a good free workshop content versus paid education content a good free workshop is something you can deliver in 30 to 90 minutes, minimally edited, and that would be your free workshop. As far as paid education content, that's um, a back end with structured learning, multiple modules, and then also downloads and resources. It's also a matter of, again, how convenient something is versus not. Quality is not what decides pay versus free. Convenience is. So that's a great question, but it's not a it's not a quality issue. It's a convenience issue. So the difference with paid versus free, as far as I'm concerned, what that really comes down to is structured learning and download resources, things like templates, and also um, the fact that things have continuity and they have an order that they could go in. For example, when you watch free stuff on YouTube, there's no order. You start wherever you want to start, and it's random. There's also distractions. It's not a learning environment. Do, watching and learning stuff on YouTube is also like public education. Um, memberships and courses are private school. Private school education often uh, does very well for people compared to public ed education, and it's not even close. The other point is the difference between what's free on the internet is free on the internet caters to an algorithm first. Let's just be very honest with that. If it's on the internet for free, it's serving the algorithm. It's also serving the lowest common denominator and the broadest people possible. When something's paid, it can be much more specific, no algorithmic involvement, and that's going to be a different experience, and it's going to be produced, made, and curated very differently. So when something's made for the algorithm, it's not made to teach you as much as it is. It's It can teach you. There is some benefit, but again, it's public school, and it's made for broad appeal. People slip through the cracks. There are people not served by public school. The paywall is the private school education that can be much more narrow in who it serves. <clears throat> so again, public school versus private school, um, algorithm versus no algorithm. Yep. 
So again, one of those issues is about the ability to curate an exist um, is to curate an experience. Um, SGT 300 says, yeah, it makes sense for people to pay more than a hundred bucks high ticket. If, um, if you help them, how do you think entertainers should go about selling for much, um, for entertainers, it's that you'd have to create some kind of very, very unique experience for them. There is a method by which an entertainer could have uh, a membership website. An example of it would be if you were an entertainer, a membership website would probably have to be here is like, if, here's how I would do it if I was an entertainer. If I was an entertainer, the way I might go about it is if I was an entertainer and I wanted to have a membership website, I would say, there's exclusive content that's paywall only, but then also I would have the archives of all of my content and it's an ad free experience to have it behind this paywall. So with the paywall, there's no advertising, there's no algorithm whatsoever. And they get to have a, a Netflix of me, a Netflix of me. So that'd be the thing. And there'd be exclusive content and there might be exclusive experiences, opportunities to like spend time with me, that sort of thing. So that is how I would approach it if you were an entertainer, but a lot of people can't do that. Now, what a lot of entertainers will do is they will build a collective, like what Linus did with Floatplane, where it's a bunch of tech creators that get together on a platform and then people pay for that. So again, that, um, <coughs> that matters. Um, James Dean says entertainment um, gossip pages, paywall, exclusive access to the quote unquote T early. Yeah. If you're an entertainer and you're cultivating more of like, um, let's say, um, to some degree, a FOMO addiction based audience, that makes sense that they want early access to things and exclusive access to things. Same thing happens for news channels, even though they're not gossip, they're news. So the thing is someone like, um, Tim pool or breaking points, for example, with Tim cast or breaking points. Um, it makes sense for them to have a private website and then they have versions of their show that are ad free, but also extended version of their shows um, and also exclusive content. So extended cuts, exclusive content behind the scenes and members only experiences all make sense. But again, it lends itself much more to the type of entertainment that goes for an older audience where there might be some affluent people with money. If it's a bunch of broke teenagers and college kids in your audience, it's not really worth doing. And so that's where that becomes more of just do Patreon and just do YouTube channel memberships and Twitch and so on and so forth. Um, like that's for, to be honest, it's for the younger demographic and then membership websites skew much more toward an older demographic. It also skews much more toward education or services or utility or expertise than entertainment. Entertainment, lowest common denominator, very shallow audience, no offense to anybody. And they also... Again, um, lower value proposition in terms of a less affluent audience. It's much more of a younger broker audience. <clears throat> um, Ray Druin says, there are stories that if you post your content early on Patreon, other sites will screw up the algorithm and the ability to go viral because of low views in the first hours. Do you think that's true? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Not sure. Exclusive content to be able to download on stream or on members only. I would not recommend allowing people to download the video content or audio content because you have people who will then just um, upload that free boot it somewhere and screw you over. Even that happened to Tim Pool where somebody decided they were going to stream. They were going to pay for the thing because he didn't make it. He didn't make it expensive enough. He made his offer too cheap. And then someone stream sniped and gave away for free the thing that he had people paying for, for members only, which is radically unfair to uh, Tim Pool with all the work that he does as an independent journalist. And someone tried to subvert that with the paywall. And so they're probably not gonna do that specific experience again um, that they were doing um, because uh, someone ruined it for everybody by thinking they're out here being Robin Hood or something, which is really stupid. It's a way of stealing from somebody. And the, unfortunately, this is what drives prices up for certain things. The reason that a lot of people, if you've ever wondered why course creators started jacking up their prices, it wasn't purely greed. It's that they need to jack up the prices to $1,000 and $2,000 for a lot of them. I'm only going to probably do $500 courses. But the reason all of my contemporaries do these multi-thousand dollar courses is because it discourages the thieves because someone isn't going to spend that money and then pray to God that they can get a refund in time after they upload your, your content 
content somewhere else and try to screw you over. Like most people cannot risk the amount of money of being that petty because they don't have it like that. So <clears throat> it's to deter thieves largely. The the higher price point ends up deterring thieves. And it sucks because things used to be more affordable, but people, um, bad people ruin it for everybody. Same thing happens with shoplifting. Shoplifting increases prices. Yep. <clears throat> So let's see, I can still answer any and all of your questions. Uh, but again, I want to just go a little bit more into some details here. This um, live stream and workshop tonight probably won't be nearly as long because we don't have as many questions coming in around this. Um, but again, like I said, one of the things I want to answer for you was, again, setting up the offer and the amount of money something costs. So like we said, the value of what you think your audience can afford. When I started out, I started out at $29 a month, but we added so much more value and we added Andy to the team. So then we became 59 a month. At some point in the future, when we have a bunch of courses that everyone gets with their Academy membership, because remember, they don't just get access to um, everything you see here in the Academy. They also get access to the YouTube starter kit, the brand deal starter kit, the creator prompts, Formula for Awesome videos, creator blueprints, creator starter pack, all these things. And when we add courses, they'll get all of those courses too. So when we do the brand deal secrets course, they'll get that. When you do the YouTube strategy guide, they'll get that. Um, when we do the uh, course on monetized uh, memberships, mastering memberships, they'll get that one as well. So there's, there's a lot of value there. So they'll be getting like these $500 courses and they'll get three of them. So at that point, when we have that in place, yeah, new members, not our old members. Our old members are all grandfathered in at their price. That's another reason for you guys, if you want to join Awesome Creator Academy now. But they um, people are grandfathered into the price that they get. That's the policy that I set. And the thing is that in the future, the plan is that we'll you know, raise the price in proportion to the value. But that's part of the other thing is we went to this all access model because the one complaint you get around memberships and things like this is, oh, people do so many upsells. You have to buy all these other things. Well, if you join our membership, you can buy these other things and own them forever, but you have access to them as a member as long as you keep paying. So it kind of to some degree eliminates that upsell complaint. So, you know, we have that. We started offering some of our $9 products to address the complaint that, oh, do you even have anything for beginners? To a degree, I originally kind of wanted to some degree to not um, really encourage beginners to join um, Awesome Creator Academy specifically, but I wanted to offer them something. Because again, um, I don't take people into Awesome Creator Academy that have less than 1,000 subscribers unless they have a business. <clears throat> Because if you have a business, but you just haven't grown your social media, then that's different. And I can work with that because you have a way to make your money. Um, so it would actually, to some degree, at least makes sense. I don't necessarily want to take a lot of money from a beginner that has no way to make it back. So we created $9 products that are absolutely time savers and frustration savers uh, for people that can't afford our $99 digital download packs or can't afford the membership. So we wanted to create kind of these different offers that people can have. And I would highly recommend that a lot of you think about what would be everything you can offer to people so that you can build beyond the membership so that you can cash flow. So if you build um, a membership, but you also build a $49 or $99 product, making the money that you pay for Kajabi every month will not be a problem for you. It won't be a problem for you because you'll be able to guarantee a way to make your money back. And that's because it will only take a handful of sales to accomplish it. So to pay for um, Kajabi, like every month would literally take one sale of one of our flagship products or something like that for that to make up the difference. So again, the cost covers itself. So that's just like a practical measure is that if you sell a product, whether it's a digital download or a course, with your membership, then it makes it easy to make the money back. If you had a $500 course, you make all of your money for the year on your cost in three sales. So that would be the wildly practical thing. 
Um, again, I have linked to Kajabi in the um, description of this video, so you can check that out. I also have linked to our sponsor, StreamYard, and I've linked to some of our products so that you can consider um, signing up for those. Um, if the like one of the best products for most of you would probably either be our creator prompts for $9.99 or our creator starter pack for $9.99. Uh, so I'm just going to link to that here. in the chat so that you can um, check that out. <coughs> yep, and so um, feel free to check that out there. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. I can also walk you through more of the back end if you want, if there are questions. Elastica. VR says, thank you for the great explanation. Appreciate the detail examples on point. <laughs> Grande Photographer says, "Woo, I could join. Yeah. Would suggest an offering the YouTube membership first, gain experience, and then build cash flow and then branch out. Um, in theory, you could, but again, YouTube takes 30%. Full of grace and truth by biblical studies. Would it be a good idea to have a Bible study, study course on a platform called Kajabi? Actually, with Kajabi, if I was in um, your thing, uh, one, I would look at what Myron Golden is doing. He's like obviously amazing and stuff like that. But the thing that I would consider is one, some kind of like paid, um, some kind of like either free or paid podcast will help you with the Bible study side. You should consider starting a podcast for your Bible study side because that'll be your lead generation. So free podcast, a free podcast is your lead generation and funnel. So then that'd be number one. Number two, I'd create some kind of very affordable five or ten dollar product that these people could buy. Um, and so that would be um probably the most practical thing. Then I'd probably create a, a slew of maybe um $29 to $59 um courses for individual Bible study courses for different things. And it would be a suite of them. So there's multiple things people could buy that would offer a membership that gives people access to all of those products without having to buy them. And then I would also set up some kind of Bible study where they meet live virtually. Um, and then there's some kind of value to having a community. And then I'd probably offer them some kind of private Facebook group community as well. And so that's probably how I'd approach it in your case. <coughs> Yep, no problem, Brandon. And we're going to be getting that out to you. I still have to just spend this weekend um, and this week emailing everybody who won stuff on the uh, giveaway stream. So Awesome Creator Academy, the back end of the digital download products, the trainings, all of that, that's on Kajabi. We meet for the office hours on Facebook. We meet for the live office hours on Facebook using StreamYard. So through StreamYard and the Facebook group, we meet face-to-face -face in live streaming twice a week for office hours via the Facebook group. The Facebook group also allows people to post things for feedback when they want it, to get feedback on their thumbnails, titles, video ideas, questions they have, and we answer those. So they can post any time um, during the week to the Facebook group. And then we meet live with uh, StreamYard in the Facebook group uh, two times a week. And so that's also the other value of the $59 a month on the membership is they get eight face-to-face -face, um, office hours. Uh, Universo Hindu says, hey, what about Thinkific as a course platform community? Uh, I've bought courses from people on Thinkific before and it's okay, but it's not as good on the design side and the no code tools as Kajabi in my experience. Kajabi is easier for people who can't code, easier for people who aren't technical and is, in my opinion, the overall better solution. And I know that Kajabi can be um, more expensive, but... Ultimately, I feel like it's the best product. 
uh, in my experience, and I've used everything. I've used Teachable. The other thing with Teachable is that was hard to fix the um, fix the uh, what do you call it the redirect for the custom domain name. It's also hard to cancel, by the way. So I like Teachable. I love what their mission is, but again, uh, I moved off that platform for a reason. So did a lot of other people. Even Ali Abdal moved off of it, and he moved to Kajabi as well. So I'm on Kajabi. Sean Candles on Kajabi. Ali Abdal's on Kajabi. Like we've all moved to it for a reason. It was easier to manage the back end, easier to manage the teams, easier to manage the admin side, no code tools, much more seamless. And the customer service side is great. So that's why we did it. Even though it costs more, that's why. And it allows us to offer a variety of products. <coughs> Yeah, my uh, creator prompts. You like my creator prompts prog product? Yep. Is Kajabi easier to do? Easy to do. It is. Kajabi is easy to do, but you do have to be business minded. Um, I hear things about Mighty Networks, but I've also heard things with Mighty Networks either selling or something like that before and everything like that. Um, Kajabi has been around for a very long time. And it's solid. And um, the majority of people I know who are six and seven figure uh, entrepreneurs in the education space use it. So that was a big reason for me building out what I did on Kajabi. Um, because like I said, my um, like a lot of people I know have used it. And I bought from people who've used it successfully. And my customer experience as a course buyer was good. So then that's where I decided to use it for my platform as well. So um, I just feel like it's practical. Some people like Mighty Networks. You can use whatever you would like for your uh, membership. Some people are using only Discord and doing theirs that way. But remember, to a degree, there is Discord operates much more like a social media platform in terms of its policies. So that was like another reason for me where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that that much. Yeah, Facebook has its issues. But again, um, less likely for things to go wrong there. Kajabi does have a built in community. Thing that would replace Facebook or Discord that's in beta. I'm waiting for that beta to improve a little bit more before I utilize or recommend it that way instead of, let's say, Facebook. But I think Facebook groups can be very good for the um, community side of the private membership. So um, that's kind of my thought on it. <coughs> Again, I also, like I said, there are things um, that with the social media platforms policies. I don't like with the social media platforms. There's policy things I don't like with the social media platforms. Aside from the policy things I don't like with the social media platforms, there's also the percentage that they take off the top. Um, yeah, discord can be confusing for older people, um, especially older people who have money. Discord can be confusing for them. So again, that would be another reason why, um, I knowing that I deal with a lot of older, more affluent people. It's one of the other reasons why I'm fine with using a Facebook group. I know some people are like, Oh, I hate Facebook, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's also good for the advertising side. It's also good for the advertising side and there's money there. Um, there's money there. Like to be real with you, old money, Facebook and LinkedIn. Old money is Facebook and LinkedIn. Young, young money, new money is um Discord, Telegram, and Twitter. New money is Discord, Telegram, Twitter, TikTok. Old money is Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Some people, again, some people do, like, there's exceptions to the rule, but everything. I know a lot of people over 50 that do use Discord, but my mom can't use Discord. My mom is not good at it. Um, as part of your services, do you offer a startup package to help creators craft out digital products and services also need help with the marketing strategy? For that, that is much more, um, Charlotte and more. Um, pun intended, that's much more like a one-on-one -on -one call with me. So I have 30 minute calls and I have 90 minute calls. Um, and that would help with that. I don't offer a course right now on memberships. Um, 
to help someone start out with that or their digital products. I don't offer a course on digital products yet. We will do that eventually. We will have like, you know, um, um, a digital product starter kit at some point. Some point we'll make like a digital product starter kit to help people get started. Um, so then you buy my 99 product, my, my $99 product, and that helps you with your $99 product. So that would be um, a thing. Um, <clears throat> should product review channels bother with memberships? Probably not a membership for a product review channel, to be honest with you. Not as far as a membership like Kajabi. YouTube channel memberships and Patreon, yes. Again, probably Patreon's better for a lot of you. YouTube channel memberships will be convenient. Maybe you still offer it. But again, YouTube takes that 30%. YouTube takes that 30%, just like they do on Super Chats. Patreon is 8 to 12%. So again, my issue becomes the percentage. But for some of you, the percentage difference won't break out right compared to paying up front. And also, some of you, your audience isn't um, affluent enough for it to matter and to um, work out. So for a lot of you, that have <clears throat> more casual entertainment consumer audiences and they're not education audiences, Patreon memberships will still matter for you. And same thing with YouTube channel memberships and Twitch. That'll still matter for you. It's tough giving up 50, 30%, 12%, 8%. It's hard, but you just don't have much of a choice because your audience would not justify the cost of building a whole membership website for yourself. Um, University of Hindu says, did you see the backlash people gave Colin and Samir for their course? Do you think it was a marketing error on their end? How would you market it? It was a little frightening. Those guys are great. Um, was this their $99 course on storytelling that they launched a couple of years ago? And did they get backlash or did they launch a new course and they're getting backlash? Let me know. And then I can address it either way. Fifty free and fabulous, yeah. Grab the Creator Starter Pack. It's linked in the description of the video. It's only nine dollars and ninety nine cents. We also have our Chat GPT Creator Prompts. Over two hundred Creator Prompts. Those are two dollar. Those are two products that are only nine dollars and ninety nine cents each. So those might be a really good place for you to start. Is the uh, Creator Starter Pack or our Chat GPT Creator Prompts? <clears throat> if Colin and Samir launched a new course and they're getting backlash, the reality is it's because their audience is hyper young. It's a young, very anti-capitalist YouTube audience that they've cultivated uh, because they deal with a lot of YouTubers who have this young, rogue audience because they're the most popular YouTubers, and it's Gen Z. So since most of their audience is Gen Z, Gen Z, not all Gen Z, some of Gen Z are young hustlers, they about it, they are unapologetic capitalists, and we love them, and they love America. However, that's not the majority of Gen Z that's on the internet and on social media. What I would say is that most of Gen Z at this point, unfortunately, are anti-capitalist and they resent being sold to and they resent anybody who they feel is already rich enough trying to make money and trying to profit instead of just accepting that, you know, if you can't afford it, you don't have to buy it. So like, so yeah, it looks like in their community tab, they have a thing about building a business on YouTube. Um, and they have like a form for people that are interested, which means literally it's just about if you're interested in this, if this for like, so again, the thing is they have these vocal broke people like that are, um, hating on them, but it's a lot. It's not most of these people that are hating on them don't have a face attached to their profile pic. Um, most of the people who have a profile pic are praising them and wishing them luck. And then there's all these like people that are small channels or faceless people that are um, giving them the negative thing. I also think they got negativity because a lot of people have just like criticized course sellers in general. And the reality is that there are a lot of good courses out there. Only the bad people get highlighted though, just like everything else. Like you never hear any good news anymore, which is really weird. Like, it's weird that we live in a society where 
literally more than 99% of the population is lawful good. In America, 99% of the population hasn't committed a crime, right? And the crimes that are committed and the violent crimes would be less than a 0.8% chance of happening to you by the number statistically, yet they constantly scare you. And I'm not saying there aren't real and present dangers and to protect yourself, but literally we live in a world where 99% of people are literally lawful good. And there's not like, you know, if you live in a civilized society, you're largely safe. We live in a world where we never get told how wonderful things are, how much more progress we have than our grandparents and our parents, how much more opportunity we have for that, all the things that we should be grateful for, all the things that we should be happy about. We are never, ever, ever marketed any of that, and we're never told any of that. We're never told any of the good things that happen, um, and yet all we see is the bad. And so even with Colin and Samir – um. They're like the, the the people that are angry with them have seen so many scam courses and stuff like that, which is the minority of courses. It's the minority of courses. If everything was such a scam, then you'd have channels that could be daily reporting to you scam of the day, scam of the day, scam of the day, scam of the day for every course seller, but they can't. And even the most prominent people who have social media followings, they can't say that their product is a scam. Like, they can't say that about Pat Flynn. They can't say that about Chris Doe. They can't say that about Daryl Leaves. They can't say that about Sean Cannell, which means that the biggest people and most prominent people who actually sell legitimate courses, you can't call them con men or scam artists. The thing is, you have a lot of entertainers that pretend to be educators that you could say that about, sure. But it's also a very small pocket of them, and it should be obvious. There's people who have dubious reputations. If people have a dubious reputation, People have a dubious reputation. They have public lawsuits. Maybe that's not somebody that you do business with. And that's kind of obvious. So the thing is, you have to wonder, well, who are these people buying for them? The people buying from them themselves want to get rich quick, which means that they themselves don't want to provide real value that was done by creating real value over a long period of time. Someone, the most of the people who fall for get rich quick schemes and scams themselves want to run get rich quick schemes and scams. That's the thing. That's the interesting part. The victims of get rich quick schemes and scams would be the next generation proprietor of a get rich quick scheme or scam because they, with no years of experience to back them up, want to make six figures. They want to make six figures with six months of skills. They themselves are the next pipeline of the get rich quick schemes themselves. That's who buy those. But again, that's a very small segment of the online community. That's a very small segment of coach sellers, course sellers. That's a small segment of course buyers even. We get marketed and sold and fed the fear, anxiety, FOMO, and terrible news all the time of the small 1% of the worst people and the worst scumbags and villains in the world. Where meanwhile, and making us fear monger, while literally 99% of the people we've ever met, 99% of the interactions we've ever had have been good, earnest, hardworking people that never harmed anybody in any serious or meaningful way. Most of our experiences in life have been good. Most of our experiences today, 99% of our interactions in the real world, maybe not on Twitter, maybe not on Twitter or Reddit, but 99% of our real world interactions today were probably good and pleasant and fine. So my issue is this, is that I just think that all this negativity and backlash becomes from the hyper negative aggressive marketing in the world of the news, social media, and even content creators who constantly just get views off the most salacious and vile people when literally 99% of everything else is good. And you could just pay attention to all the good. You could just pay attention to all the good. You could prioritize the good. You could only work with good people. You could only buy from good people. And it wouldn't be that difficult. It wouldn't even be that difficult to only buy from good people and accredited people. It's also not that hard to buy from people who aren't a scam. You can decide very easily that someone's not a scam. Have I gotten value from their free content? Yes or no. <clears throat> Have I had a good experience publicly interacting with this person in social media? Have they replied to me thoughtfully and kindly? That's very easy. Does this person have any lawsuits right now publicly that if I like type in their name and are they lawsuits? Okay, great. So um, that, do they have a criminal background? Okay, very easy one there. Do they have um, like very dubious reputation in terms of being involved with unsavory things? No? Okay, great. Do they have a strong network of people that I also like, trust, and believe to be good people that they associate with? Or do they associate with a lot of unsavory people 
and um, platform them, then you could look at that. Okay. Very easy there. Um, you could look at their refund policy. You could look at whether you've made any progress or value listening to their instruction. Um, there's that aspect of it. You could look at the reviews that they have. I have over 40 trust pilot testimonials from people that you could look up with most of them being verified creators that you can look up. That's the thing about my stuff. I don't even have a course yet and I'm going to, but the thing is you can look up almost 50 trust pilot reviews, like 43 trust pilot reviews of people who I've worked with and they've had a positive experience and they're verified creators that you could look up and know who they are. So there's that aspect of it. You have seen me do channel reviews and you've even seen people who have done channels reviews for grow in the past. Even when we did the old channel review series um, about like six years ago or something like that, we did a channel review series six years ago. Um, a bunch of those creators have silver play buttons now. Paris Sumter LeSweet, uh, uh, LeSweet P, she has a silver play button. Uh, Kimberlea, she has a silver play button. They were small creators under, I think, 10,000. Um, we had that. Geekdom 101 is on his way to a gold play button. Um, <clears throat> Epos Vox, Adam, he has a silver play button. Um, like, you know, we've reviewed channels and done dedicated channel reviews for small YouTubers in the past on this channel and have those videos historically up. And years later, um, not even, it didn't take all of them years. Kimberlea got to silver play button in eight months. Paris got to it in like a year after the review and taking the advice. There's like, so we have like a track record. Find people who have a track record and have proven results find people who have a good reputation, find people who don't have a criminal background or history, work with those people, buy from those people, rely on those people. And again, people you yourself have actually gotten value from. And if they have a small, cheap thing, like you can buy, like a book, for example, I got a book. People can sit there, buy my book. It's literally $10 on Kindle, $15 for the paperback. And you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified to give you any real value. And the book is the first gateway product you could get that would make sense because if you get something out of my book and it helps you, then that makes sense. You also have my free content on YouTube. If it helps you, then that's an easy way to vet a course or a coach. It's actually not that difficult. Um, it's not that difficult to vet a coach or a course, to be honest with you. But again, we see so much negative stuff that um, we see so much negative stuff that we get blindsided and don't realize the overwhelming majority is good. Eva Rebirth says, been following the channel since the years in 2016, never gotten to making content consistently. Yeah. Having a channel review is definitely eye-opening and helpful. Yep, absolutely. Simple due diligence and common sense, but people who are money quick hungry just want instant gratification so they don't do research. Yeah, that's a problem and I've seen it. Absolutely, that's a problem and I've seen that from people and I think that it's um, very much based on the psychology of the buyer themselves not being adequately qualified for the opportunity to begin with. Um, I kind of go out of my way to disqualify um, people who aren't like right for the opportunity. Um, not everyone's willing to do that. Obviously Thelma thrift. Thank you for being a channel member. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, I don't, if you're new to YPP, it's very, uh, it's very not likely that someone would move to your private membership platform. So I would agree with that. Yes. Negative people absolutely typically are the loudest. Um, and I, I would say that that matters. Um, Route 675 says, Colin Samir's content is much more entertainment than education. That means a chunk of the audience has only heard of courses in the context of a CoffeeZilla video. You're right. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that a thousand percent. Since they're more entertainment, the only context that those people have and background those people have for courses is the CoffeeZilla scam videos, the Spencer Cornelia like scam videos. That would be... Um, their frame of reference and their only experience. So then from their point of view, it would look like Colin and Samir are um, selling out. But the thing is, Colin and Samir early on tried to do purely educational content and they were very good at it, honestly. It just didn't have as big as a draw as the um, entertainment side. I mean, you can see it with the contrast in our content. Look at how I've had the struggle bus to 600,000 uh, and look at how I do literally live trainings, 
workshop, how to pure education, no fluff, no entertainment, nothing wrong with entertaining people and inspiring young content creators, nothing wrong with doing an interview show and going the Joe Rogan route, nothing wrong with that. But the big difference and contrast in my audience and the Colin and Samir audience is one, the age differential. Most of my audience is definitely well above 25. Majority of you are over 30. Majority of my audience is over 30. In fact, actually, if you want in the chat right now, you can tell us your age and also what type of content you make or why you watch the channel. Actually, I'd love that. If you could tell me your age in the chat, we have over 120 of you in the chat right now. Tell me your age in the chat and what makes you watch my content, why you watch the channel. That would be great. While you're at it, you can smash the like button. I'd appreciate that as well. That actually helps. So again, um, I would say that the Colin and Smear audience is majority under 25. It's mostly college age and younger and teenagers. I have a good friend who's college age, who's like doing his undergrad in law that watches them and was a day one subscriber, has been watching them for years and years and years, has been watching them since they were in high school. So since that person's been watching them and since they were in high school or middle school and they're in college now, they're a long time Colin and Samir fan. I've been watching them for a very, very long time. And the reality is that a lot of their audience is that young audience. They are resistant to buying anything that's not materialistic in sense of they will buy merch. They will buy a hat or a t-shirt or a hoodie. They will buy published press merch. They're used to that. That's how they believe in supporting people. They will do a super chat or super thanks here or there. They will buy a Mr. Beast bar. They will buy a Mr. Beast burger. They will do that sort of thing. They'll buy something that is consumable. They will do something that lets them wear merch that lets them have the identity of being part of a creator's audience and feeling like to support that way. They are not the type of people who will buy a digital product or will buy a course, probably maybe not even buy a book from a creator unless it's a tell all of that creator's life story. They won't buy an educational book. They're just not that audience. That's the difference. People, a lot of the people, the 1 million plus people who watch Colin Samir, most of them do not watch my channel. In fact, they do not show up in my analytics as a, um, the, oh, people who watch this also watch you. Majority of the time they don't. We don't have that cross pollination. Uh, to some degree, I think people in their audience would get value from my content. I think some of them would actually be great to have an awesome creator academy, but I'm not reaching them because again, they're entertainment first consumers. They're entertainment first consumers and that's okay. I want an education first audience. I only want career content creators. I don't necessarily make content for people who are doing it for a hobby or fun, but for people who might start with it for a hobby or fun, who want to make money off of it, that's the audience I'm cultivating. That's the audience I'm cultivating. So um, let's see. Paula is 60 and she watches me to learn about multiple streams of income. Solo cruising and more is 59 and watches me because I tell it like it is. And that's important. The lounge with LT says, I subscribe to your channel to learn how to grow my channel and reach more people. I do gaming and relaxation, mental health, wellness. Um, that might be a lot of things. You might need to niche down a little bit. Full of grace and the truth. Biblical says, I'm 38 years old. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Um, I love watching you because you have the best content to help me build my platform on YouTube and so forth. I also work a full-time job with three kids and a wife. Okay, congratulations. Yucky Ham Sandwich says, I'm 33. I'm a gaming channel. I watch you since your graphic design days when I was going to graphic design school. Now I watch you learn more about YouTube and your tell it like it is advice. Uh, Crayon TV says, I'm 32. I watch you for the valuable information you provide and your channel has helped me a lot. Tales from the Empty Nest says, I'm 48, have a cooking channel. I believe in educating yourself by listening to people who inspire you. So great. Like, so again, most of my crowd, you saw it yourself. Most of my crowd is 30 plus. My crowd is old millennial and Gen X. That's my peoples. Um, Knock Talon's Campfire says, Roberto, I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on VTubers that use reactive PNG to get started into content creation? They say it's a great way to learn how to entertain people with your own voice. I think it's really cool. I watch a couple of them from time to time. It's very entertaining. I take no issue with it. I think it's actually a really solid idea for a lot of people who are too shy to be on camera. <coughs> Excuse me. Louis Joseph says, 30 plus learning how to do YouTube and social media from a business perspective. That's what I like to hear. Clover Tech. Clover Tech has a firearms channel. Uh, 47 firearms content like smashed a long time ago. Watch Roberto since probably 15K because he is real. I don't always agree with or feel what he says applies to me, but he is real. So no fluffy bunny pipe dream messages. Thank you, Clover Tech. Yeah, that's what I try for. 
Uh, Crystal Vanner says, 52, watch to educate myself, encouragement, and because I believe you are the truth. Um, appreciate you. Home Rapid Repair, 51 years old. Home Improvement Education, licensed contract for, for 23 years. Um, 33, valuable advice on creator economy. Root, um, 675 is 20 years old. Uh, appreciate you being like the like one of my only Gen Z watchers. Appreciate you. Um, Duct Tape Unicycle says, 33, watching the channel for deep dives and understanding how to come at YouTube with a business mindset. Evo Rebirth, one of my only Gen Z watchers. I make anime content and I watch your channel to help sharpen my mind as a creator. Awesome. Yeah, I've helped a lot by anime creators, actually. Um, Kadi Ya says, 30, love the educational content, very transparent, super generous. Mari Cannon says, 54, still researching how to get started. Yep, never too late to get started. Uh, Christina uh, Testana says, 32, and I make branding content for art therapists. I watch Roberto over since the beginning. Love is honest message and knowledge. Thank you. Appreciate that. So yeah, again, you can literally see in the live stream that almost everyone here, aside from like a handful of people, I would argue 90% of the live stream is over 30. Um, and so that's, um, we have a, a handful of people, handful of people. Like, so, <clears throat> handful of people under 25. Um, I don't know about courses, but the person I like the best when it comes to SEO is Matt Diggity. I'm just not sure if Matt Diggity has a course. And I've actually coached him, helped him with his YouTube channel. He's very successful. He was recommended to me from Nick Nimmin. Nick Nimmin recommended Matt Diggity to me. I helped him with his YouTube channel. We did, I think, two or three consults. It went very well. He is absolutely the SEO guru. Um, I've even learned a lot from watching his content. And I think he has a course. He may or may not have a course. Um, he might have a service. So BBQ Inferno, if you're looking for someone on SEO, check out Matt Dig. excuse me, check out Matt Diggity, Matt Diggity. Um, yeah, my book, uh, there's a Google version that I had AI do audio for, but we haven't finished the AI audio with my actual voice because as you can see, I'm still getting over a cold and I'm doing the live stream. So my voice isn't a hundred percent. So, um, still working on getting you an audio book with my voice, but there's an audio version with an AI. <coughs> That's on Google Books. So yeah. Um, Knock Talons Campfire says, not to brag, Roberto, but I'm 31 and I'm very fortunate um, enough for my family letting me live at home with them to pursue my dreams as long as I work very hard and strive for something that matters. Yeah, absolutely. And everything. Look, um, you know, I have um, younger siblings. Some of them are about your age and still working their way um, through life and trying to get some things done. I put them in a position to where they don't have to pay me rent or anything. So when you guys support me, that's actually what you help support is the way I've changed my family's life. And I can support my younger siblings. I can give them the opportunity to build up, get out of debt, become debt free in the next couple of years and start their life on the right foot. And I can give them that because I was able to get this house. I was able to get this house because we have a great community. Um, I've been able to be successful and earn six figures for the last like six years because of the great community we have and all the support all of you give me, great brands like StreamYard, so on and so forth. So um, you guys have literally changed my life and you've changed my family's life and you've given me the opportunity to help my younger siblings start their adult life correctly. So, um, you know, again, shout out to all of y'all for that. Clever Tax says, what I hear in all these comments is that Roberto Blake is respected and that is super important and you gotta be a big part of why he is successful, but respect, be respectable folks. Yeah. It actually does matter to make sure that you're in a position to uh, keep your respect and do the right thing. Exploring Canada says baby boomer retired. Your message is timeless. Getting so much out of your book, have enjoyed your Patreon and YouTube membership. Your advice works. Thank you so much. Exploring Canada. Appreciate you. Shout out to all my Gen Xers and boomers out there. <clears throat> um, Ken Brown says, 49, I just listened because I don't have time for fluff. Appreciate you. Yep. Uh, 
So yeah, I mean, so that's that's kind of some of my thoughts here um, when it comes to a lot of this. I'm sad to see the backlash that people are giving Colin and Samir on their course. Um, everyone also thinks that there's all this free advice on sponsorships. I'm going to be making a $500 sponsorship course that I'm releasing before the end of the year. Um, it's like, I honestly feel like, no, all the advice in the world isn't been given on that. And all the free advice in the world hasn't been given on sponsorships. And even if the advice is free, it doesn't guarantee that these people will find it and it doesn't guarantee they will implement it. So no, I don't believe that there is. And I think Colin and Samir could give a good course on brand deals. I absolutely think they could. I think that what they probably should have done is a cohort, but they may not have time for that. And again, these people saying, oh, there's all this free information. It's like not when it comes to brand deals, not when it comes to business, not when it comes to the business of YouTube. There's a lot of fluff out there on like how to grow a channel, but to run and operate a creator business. Again, I'm like one of the only people sitting here showing you the back end and showing you how my systems work and telling you what my tech stack is what youtube video are you guys watching besides like me obviously where people are showing you oh here's my tech stack here's how i um process the back end of my stuff here's where i make my money besides youtube adsense here's how i um use these systems here's how i build landing pages here's how i build the mock-ups here's how i build a sales page here's how i set up an offer here's how i set up my automations here's my analytics like no one shows you that in the free content because it's all for clicks for the algorithm and this younger audience doesn't have the patience for it and even when someone does pure do pure education like me it doesn't get the same views call and samir get views because they're making entertaining content and they're making joe rogan style content when it comes to education people aren't watching um, and that's just the truth. And that's why they have 1.2 million subscribers and I have 600,000 and get struggle bus views, but it's okay. I'm okay with that because I'm okay with the business model and I'm okay with my older audience. They get more views because they have a younger audience that kills their time on YouTube. And again, shout out to Colin and Smear. They're great guys. I've met them several times. I've been a big subscriber and a big fan and advocate for them for years and they deserve their success and more power to them. I think there is to some degree an air in the marketing of, I think that they just do not recognize and accept as much as they want to help. I think they want to help young creators. I think Colin Smear desperately want to help young creators make more money, build a business and stop being broke. And I don't think a lot of young creators take it seriously. They don't want to spend money to make money. They don't want to educate themselves. They want to believe in luck. They want to believe that all they have to do is try their little hearts out and they don't want to learn how to build a business because they don't want a career and they don't want to think of this like a business and a job. They want a hobby that pays them. They want fun to pay them. That's the problem with the younger audience. No offense to some of the young ones out there, but you know your peers. The young people in this audience are different. The young people in my audience are different, but the rest of you, you know your counterparts. You know your friends still have a broke hobby mentality and want to get paid to have fun. They do not want to build a business. And YouTube is a serious business. The creator economy is a serious business. It is a legitimate career that should be respected and treated with dignity and treated with honor and that people should be well compensated from. Absolutely. But the problem is the youth of the market delegitimize the creator economy because they refuse to grow up and take it seriously. They refuse to treat it like a respectable career. They want the respect, but they don't want to give it the respect. They don't want to give it the dignity and do that it deserves and they refuse there's other careers any other career that's a white collar career that you want to do you have to invest thousands of dollars for you have to invest thousands of dollars for a white collar career creators think that they can go out and spend thousands of dollars on camera gear but then no money on education because they think that the internet will teach it all to them for free the internet teaches people for free who are already smart and i will make a point about this i'll make a point about this do you know what private school, what the difference between private and public school is? If you go to public school and you need a lot of help, you're screwed and you're going to be a C or D student if you even graduate. A students in public school were already smart 
They often come from safe and privileged backgrounds, or they have natural talent and ability. Some people study their little heart out on their own because they have to. And so people who either have the discipline and a safe environment or the motivation and the hunger to study, like a lot of immigrants do, they study their brains out, or they have talent, or they have privilege. That's who does well and becomes an A student in public school. People who don't have the resources, luxury, or support and don't have the natural God-given ability and talent, they flounder and they're C and D students and trying their little heart out or even getting a little bit of help at best would make them a B student, but they will never be an A student. They won't get the scholarships. They won't get the honors cords. They won't get the awards. That's the truth about public school. The internet is the same way. The internet, if everything was so good that was so free, everyone would make six figures, but they don't. They don't, not because we don't have the capacity to support it, but because the only people who can use the internet and the free content on the internet to be successful were already smart, already talented, already privileged. That's the truth. They already had an advantage. Private school, if you had the parents who had the privilege to put you in private school, but you weren't smart, you will still fare better and come out ahead compared to a public school person who did have, who was smart. A average person who goes to private school will come out ahead in life of a very smart person who went to public school. That's the truth. That's the difference that privilege can make if you go to private school and have that access. Because what do you get from private school? Much more one-on-one -on -one attention, smaller classroom, more resources, and a better network. That's why a private school person that otherwise would have been a C student in public school can come out ahead in life. An average person that goes to private school will come out ahead in life versus a smart person who went to public school. That's the harsh truth. And everyone here knows it. Everyone here knows it. That's the difference between the free content on the internet and the stuff behind paywalls. The stuff behind paywalls, the advantage is specialized one-on-one -on -one attention if you join a cohort or a membership like what I do or Ali Abdal or Patty Gataway does. It's the community you get the, pub, the personal attention, the individualized special attention. That's why coaching is like having a tutor. If someone hires me for a coach, it's like people who paid for a tutor or a trainer. Someone who already is gifted can do on their own. Somebody who hires a trainer who is not talented and gifted will exceed someone who only had talent. That's the truth. That's why the private trainer, the private school, the professional tutor, that works. Buying courses is like someone, the difference between someone who studies on their own versus someone whose parents can buy them that $300 SAT prep guide. The kids who can buy the $300 SAT prep guide and the flashcards generally score better than the kids who just try and study their brains out on their own. We all know this. That's the truth. That's the advantage that money and privilege provides. So we know that. So the people who spend money and have that ability have an unfair advantage over people who have to rely on free. That's what no one wants to accept. So all the people saying, oh, no, all the information's on free, all the information is free on the internet. Oh, we don't need any more courses and everything like that. They do not understand the disadvantage of public versus private. They do not understand the difference in that level of privilege and what it provides. Everyone here knows that the kid who had the tutor beats the kid who doesn't. The kid who has the tutor beats the kid who doesn't unless they're a genius. The kid who has the private school beats the kid who doesn't unless that kid's already a genius. Free public is only for people who are already smart or have some other unfair advantage to leverage that can augment it. The real advantage will always be private communities, private training, private coaching, and private schooling, and um, paywalled resources. It will always be the unfair advantage. It always has been. That's even true with traditional education. It is doubly true with white-collar careers and emerging careers. <clears throat> it is an unalienable fact. And I have a really hard time considering... Uh, I have a really hard time understanding why um, I have a really hard time understanding why so many people shout out to Chad, by the way, appreciate you, brother. Um, I, I have a hard time understanding why it is Gen Z, um, the, the community and the generation that talks so much about like privilege doesn't understand this. Like, it makes no sense to me. Um, having a good time doing what you love does matter, and it can. But to some degree, 
to some degree, the like when you make something a career, it's okay if you enjoy the process, but it cannot be the priority. Like in a business, if your priority is having fun, the business will suffer. But if your priority is fulfilling the obligations of the business and you get to enjoy doing it, then that makes sense. But that's the difference. But by the way, in gaming, gaming is very much a, a nice, like a hobby that can become a career. But again, to make it a career does suck a lot of the fun out of it. I've coached like 30, 40 gamers this year already, right? And we've had that same conversation with these gamers. A lot of them play Clash of Clans, Brawl Stars, Clash Royale, that sort of thing. Um, making gaming a career sucks the fun out of it. I'll be very real with you. Um, you know, it is not that much fun, all things considered. That's what makes it very hard for a lot of content creators um, to move from hobby to career is because they are in that mode of I'm prioritizing having fun. I'm prioritizing enjoying it. I'm prioritizing when it's like a business and a career is not something where you usually get to prioritize fun. I'm not saying it can, I'm not saying it has to be zero fun. I'm saying it cannot be the priority. Not if you want it to be successful, not most of the time. And if that were the case, and then even if it was, it applies the most to creators under 25 are the people who get to have fun. I'm not saying you can't have fun as an older content creator. I'm saying that when you have adult responsibilities, which is the other truth that I tell you guys is about the re adult responsibilities. I have adult responsibilities. I may not be married with kids, but I do have, still have a household of people I'm responsible for and that I give opportunities to. And so ultimately I have that a similar level of responsibility and a similar commitment. And with that in mind, I take things very seriously. I have to make sure I'm doing the right things to make sure the mortgage gets paid. I have to make sure insurance gets paid. I have to make sure that healthcare costs are covered and so on and so forth and everything like that. That's very different than a 25 year old. 25 year old may not have that situation. And so they get to prioritize fun, but it's a limited time. Somebody who is in their twenties, like early twenties gets to do that. So, you know, there's that aspect. Um, duct tape unicycle says free public education is there to teach you how to work within the system and be a good cog in the wheel. You have to go outside of public education to learn how to break out of that truth. Very true. You'd have to spend money to make money. I mean, again, my streams are great and my streams are great. Why? Because I have a microphone. That's very good. The microphone is a $400 microphone. It goes into a $600 interface through a $100 cloud lifter. The audio component of me having some of the best audio is already a $1,200 investment. The switcher is $300. The cameras and lenses here for the live stream, this live stream, this entire live stream battle station is a $10,000 production or more. The screen that I'm on is $1,500. Can you do it without all of that? Sure. But it would be a lot harder and it would take more time versus the money that was spent. I have made a lot of money from YouTube, but I also don't mind telling you I've put well over $100,000 into my hardware over the years to invest in giving you guys the best experience I'm capable of. I actually spent, despite being sick today, despite being sick today, I spent all morning and part of the afternoon in my basement working on a new green screen set for the basement besides the gray wall uh, with the backdrop. I worked on a green screen and did testing all day and then had to practice my chroma keying for that green screen to make it look decent and adjust the lighting. I had to do five different video tests to get it right. Then I had to adjust the audio and make the audio workflow work for the new microphone down there. And so I spent all day just testing, making better videos for you all day today. I spent five hours on that. I spent five hours today testing and practicing, making better green screen videos for you so that we can get green screen videos back on the channel that are well produced and well edited again. And I, I sat there and I even was setting up a second camera angle so that when we don't do green screen, we can use the gray or white backdrop and we can just do multicam so that you can get a high quality, high effort experience from me that doesn't feel like uh, he's just sitting there in front of the camera and everything like that. So like, but there's nothing wrong with you guys you love me apparently going live and sitting in front of a camera. So, I mean, there is that. But even with this live stream experience, going multicam, doing um, all of this, having the ability to display the super chats. I'm There's another level to the live stream experience where I'm going to do some weird combo between OBS and StreamYard to give you guys an even better live stream experience. That's going to take me about another month or two to finish um, what I'm working on for that. But 
again, there's a lot of money that goes into making a high quality production. The interviews that you guys see me doing the interviews, even though those don't get a lot of views, there's three cameras for that. You think it's cheap? No, it, it absolutely doesn't. Um, so, um, I'm fine with people who make high quality content. Um, you know, putting in the effort. Now, what I don't recommend is I don't like people who sell their stuff or run up their credit cards to make um, courses. Like, or sorry, not to make courses, to buy courses. <clears throat> like, what I believe in is courses are for people who can afford them the same way private school is for people who can afford it. Coaching is for people who can afford it the same way that tutors are for people who can afford it. I don't believe in spending money you don't have. You know me. I'm the guy who's anti-debt. I'm the guy who's anti-debt, anti-running up credit cards to buy a camera gear, all that stuff. You know that I'm very much against that. Um, I'm also against the massive student loan scams. Like That's something I don't like. We've talked about this before. So my problem is that there's no individual responsibility on people for how they buy stuff, how they choose to afford things. There's no individual responsibility put on that. Everyone just says, oh, don't sell anything because there's these vulnerable people who can't help themselves. It's like, no, people need to grow the hell up and they need to learn what they do and don't qualify for in an opportunity. And they need to hold themselves accountable. And it's not the fault of people who sell a product. It's not their responsibility to baby these people and to child proof the world for them. Child proof in the world is a terrible idea. And everyone here over 30 knows that. People have to grow the hell up and some of them are going to take their lumps and some of them are going to have bad experiences and some of them are going to be collateral damage. And that's the way the world is. We cannot protect everybody from being collateral damage from their own poor choices, poor judgment, bad decisions, because they can't help themselves. Can't do it. We've already made the world sufficient enough to where it's probably not going to completely destroy them to make a few bad decisions. We've probably gone too far on that. And there's not enough consequences for those bad decisions to be a deterrent anymore. I mean, that's just one man's point of view, but I'm sure some of you share that sentiment. So, no, I my issue is as long as someone's making a good product, I have no issue with them. As long as they're not doing deceptive marketing, I have no issue with them. Uh, I would put more individual responsibility on the consumer because I believe we have a hyper consumer culture. We have way too much debt. We're up to what? One trillion in credit card debt, one trillion in student loan debt. It's irresponsible. I put it on people making bad choices. Now, to some degree, the people who do do deceptive marketing, the people who do take advantage of people, I have accountability and blame to go around for them as well. But it's very difficult for people who know their budget, set a budget, know their circumstances, know what they do and don't have and say, you know what? I'm only going to operate within my means. I'm only going to live within my means. It's very hard to get taken advantage of in that situation when you're doing that appropriately. So, you know, there is something to be said for that. There is something to be said for being a grown up, having individual responsibility. Um, I do not believe in being one of these YouTubers who, um, there are YouTubers I know who went $30,000 in debt to launch their YouTube channel. And I don't believe in that. I don't believe in running up $30,000 worth of credit card debt to launch a YouTube channel. Nor do I believe in dropping out of high school to start a YouTube channel just because people have done it. I think that's like terrible ideas that people do. And it's it's like it's irritating to me that literally almost every single day and almost every single stream and almost every single day in Twitter, I have to tell people almost every day, do not drop out of high school to do YouTube. <clears throat> I have to tell people every day, you'd be shocked. I have to tell people every day to not drop out of high school to do YouTube. You know? Um, how do I like my U house? Uh, it's now two years and I love this house. There's some stuff I've had to do um, with electrical and plumbing, but that's just, you know, you buy an older house. That's what you have to live with. But other than that, I... I love this house. I love my neighborhood. I love my neighbors. I love my community. It's been great. So I really enjoy it. Yeah, you have a 22,000 uh, streaming setup. Yep, I could see it, man. I could definitely see it. Yep, you just said this verbatim, but it's not said enough. Absolutely. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, you, you like YouTube is not all about fun. It takes a lot of hard work and discipline. I went from 20,000 to 100,000 subscribers in like 14 months, which I'm making a video about. And I was only able to do that because in three years I made 700 videos. I had enough videos to um, be able to grind my way to that. I grinded my way to it. No luck, no viral videos, no nothing. Um, and I didn't have this wonderful privilege situation. I had to work for all of it. Um, you know, so like that was um, that was the real deal. That's why you guys see it. I've made 1600 videos on the the channel. Um, it's all just been grind. It's all been hard work. Some videos pop, some videos don't. Um, on average, like it takes one out of every eight videos for me to get a um, hundred view videos, like one out of every eight videos. And during the pandemic, I had my mental health go out the window, so I wasn't uploading. So I stopped 75% of my uploads and now I'm rebuilding. So, um, you know, uh, I think about this in very practical terms. How do we make this sustainable? I've done this, you know, for a long time. I've done this for like 10 years now. So I actually do feel like I have a lot of understanding, credibility, and that I can teach people. And I have taught people. I've taught people. Um, I've coached more than 500 creators with Awesome Creator Academy. 60 of them have silver play buttons, to my knowledge. Um, I've coached 500 creators directly through Awesome Creator Academy. 60 of them have silver play buttons. In fact, actually, I'm collecting um, a bunch of them. We're hoping to get like 10 of these um, within the next year. Um, so one of my students was gracious enough because I requested it um, to send me a copy of her silver play button. So I have a copy of her silver play button here. They give you um, the YouTube letter and everything like that. Um, and so this one is from a uh, sewing report. Um, so shout out to Jen over at sewing report who I helped uh, grow her channel. And so this is a copy of her play button. Now I have my own play button award, but I'm also collecting uh, so, uh, copies of the play button awards from my students. And we're going to build like a wall, kind of like a shrine. My mentor, Daryl Eves does the same thing. And so uh, we're going to be doing that. And that's going to be part of my marketing as well, but it's the proof and undeniable proof of the results that can be produced through people's hard work when they're given proper instruction, guidance, and leadership. Um, and it does matter. And again, it's why I said about private versus public. It's about having that tutor, having that trainer, having that private school education. It matters. It, it matters versus the public school education. It's always mattered. It's always been that privileged situation of people who have the resources to buy private mentoring, training, coaching. How do you think kids get to the Olympics? They don't get to the Olympics with hard work alone. They don't get to the Olympics with talent alone. They all get a championship coach that takes them further to the Olympics. And what do the parents do? They sacrifice for it. They find the money from somewhere. A lot of the people who go to Olympics, it takes them being from privileged backgrounds, or it takes a benefactor to take an underprivileged kid and invest in them to make them an Olympic champion. That's the truth. And so a lot of people don't understand that most successful YouTubers, to be honest with you, a lot of the reason they're successful is some of them grinded from it from nothing and were broke like me. But a lot of the biggest YouTubers, they came from some privileged background that gave them an advantage and gave them an opportunity. A lot of the biggest YouTubers, they'll tell you they didn't buy a $500 coach, but I know who they paid $10,000. Or sorry, they'll pay, tell you they didn't buy a $500 or $1,000 course. I know the $30,000 mastermind that they signed up for because I got free access to it. I know the big YouTubers who paid 30,000, 20,000, 10,000 to be in elite masterminds and private discord groups and won't admit to it. Now I'm not a scam exposing channel or I'm not a gossip or tea channel and I don't betray people's confidences, but I will tell you that plenty of people with gold and diamond play buttons, they'll sit there and tell you and make you think that they're a genius who did it on their own. They have consultants on payroll. They hired the biggest people and everything. They hired CeeLo. They hired Mario. They hired Chucky. They hired elite strategist. And that's why they're successful. At least to the degree that they are. They were capable without it, but they put the money they made back into having someone take them to the next level. And these are some of the biggest creators. These Some of these people are gold and diamond play button creators. And again, so again, 
yeah, courses aren't always the answer. Sometimes it's coaching and it's t- uh, training and having that tutor, having that personal trainer. Same, the same creators, some of them have higher um, fitness trainers. You realize some of these creators, the reason they're so popular and attractive is they literally not only have a strategist working for them, they have a personal trainer that keeps them in shape and keeps their physique and their appearance. They have an image consultant and someone who helps them with their fashion, their looks, and their makeup, and their hair, or whatever. And um, on top of that, some of them have had work done. Like So a lot of these people, there's a pit crew that makes them successful. There's a team that makes them successful. Beyond the team that helps with editing and all these things, literally down to their image, in terms of their image consultant and personal shopper for their fashion and their wardrobe that made them like look better the physical uh, trainer that they hired to keep in shape and make sure that they have their physique and they keep their looks. And then on top of that, the strategist that they have behind the scenes. And a lot of them will not, why are they going to tell you about that? <clears throat> Shout out to Chad Christian, American Dream Trading sponsored this super chat. Appreciate you, Chad. Always love you, Chad. Thank you so much. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's a real thing. You guys have to see it. There is literally a pit crew behind a lot of these people and everything like that. These people are paying like, like even the dudes, the dudes are paying like $80 a haircut to keep their image. The dudes are paying like 80 to $120 a haircut. Think about that. I'm not going to name any names, but you know, think about it. And again, they absolutely have personal trainers. You know that that is not uh, like, you know, that's not just them. They have personal trainers to keep that up and more power to them. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a, it's, it's practical for them. It's a business expense for them. It's a um, thing. Oh, by the way, for the play buttons, you can order multiple copies of your play button. You'd have to pay shipping and you have to pay a fee for it. Um, you get the first one free. And then if you want to order copies for you, your team, your coach or whatever, you pay the extra for that. So for the people who I've worked with, I tell them, hey, I'll cover the cost and everything like that. And I'll even give you another 30 minute consult um, if you send me a copy of the play button. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on splurging on things that inspire your creativity as an artist and content creator? Um, do it in budget. I do not believe in doing things that are out of budget. I'm a frugal person in that regard. Um, uh, there's a lot of things I'm selling, donating, giving away to goodwill, getting rid of. I'm like, I don't like seeing things I'm not using around and um, things like that. Um, you may have noticed that I have been going down to a minimalist wardrobe of where I'm wearing my Steve Job turtlenecks. I have multiple copies of the same black leather hat. Um, I have the Steve Job turtlenecks. I have the same um, three hoodies that I wear. I'm literally like going. And then I have stuff that I wear for going out when I like I, the rare occasion that I go out. I go to events. I go on dates, something like that. I dress up for that, obviously. So I have a few pieces for that. Mostly, though, it's the jackets and it's the things like the shoes and the boots for that. But I went down to a capsule wardrobe, look respectable. I only bought these watches, again, for going out and stuff like that because I don't really care. I would only just wear my Apple Watch, um, which is still a Series 5, I think, and everything because I am literally have not upgraded an Apple Watch in three editions or something like that. I'm that frugal. I'm still rocking the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro Max. I haven't upgraded to the 15 yet, even though I really would love the USB Type-C. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. That one I probably will. It's in my budget. I will do it. And it's a business expense. But I'm like, I'm putting it off as long as possible. There's things I don't use that I'm looking at selling. Even things that I kind of liked that I was like, oh yeah, I want to have all of the lenses or this or that. I'm kind of looking at selling things I'm not used and saying, why do I have this? Why is this taking up space on my shelf? Why is this taking up space in my life? Why don't I just sell it? Like there's there's things I'm doing like that because I'm getting to this very minimalist, frugal place. So like for me, I just, um, I don't really believe in splurging. I'm um, a person that's mad about frugality and it's one of those things to where I can buy Apple products because I currently hold 120 shares or something of Apple stock. Whenever I look at buying something, I go, what if I just bought the company? What if I just buy more Apple stock? What if I just buy more Google stock? So like, I kind of think in those terms, <coughs> why don't I just pay down more debt? Why don't I just pay off that credit card? Why don't I like, so that's kind of like, the way, the way I am. Brandon's recovery. I'm thinking about joining Awesome Creator Academy. If it's in your budget, then definitely would love to have you if it's in your budget. 
Roberto, what is the difference between the pro group membership and the regular Creator Academy membership? Um, there isn't one. Um, we just call it the pro group um, because it was better marketing to call it the pro group. Um, but it's it's the it's there's no difference. Um, it's just a matter of difference between monthly and yearly. It's monthly and yearly. We just call it the pro group because that just is better marketing and it's worked better. And because the mission is really to get someone to monetize, diversify, the thing we solve for is like, okay, can we improve your reach? Can we grow your audience? Can we increase your revenue streams? Can we diversify your revenue streams? So again, that's kind of a professional mindset. So we call it the pro group because I want people to have a, the mindset of a professional. So we call it the pro group. It's better marketing. But there's not like a lower tier. There's not a lower tier. It's just, just the pro group. Uh, we haven't picked the winner for the Sony camera because I'm still contacting uh, people in terms of their prizes and determining who lives in the United States and Canada because the camera can only go to someone in the United States and camera per shipping and insurance because uh, that's just too expensive otherwise. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> uh, we're also figuring out who won um, microphones because we did give away a couple during the stream, but we didn't give away all of them. So we're figuring out who won microphones, who won starter kits, who won other things, who won copies of my uh, book. So we're still figuring out winners uh, from the 600K live stream. We're also probably going to do um, eventually, not right away. Eventually, we're going to be doing small giveaways on a monthly basis, but we are going to do 100K milestone giveaways. But the thing is, on a monthly basis, we'll start doing giveaways of my book so we have something to give away every month. And we're going to try to give away at least a microphone or two every month. We'll give away one or two DD microphones every month. We're figuring all of that out because for the people who are YouTube channel membership members, what the YouTube channel members should know is what I'm doing is I'm taking the money from the YouTube channel memberships. I'm taking the money from the YouTube channel memberships and I'm still, I still owe you guys some extra content for the channel memberships, but I'm taking the channel membership money and all that money gets set aside for me to put money toward giveaways. So that's the uh, that's the thing. So we get enough money from the channel memberships to do about right now about a good um, two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars worth of giveaways a year, not a month per year. So we can spread that out. So um, that is how we're doing it right now. When we get more channel members, because I know not everyone can join the Awesome Creator Academy Pro Group and my membership website. That's why I still encourage some of you to find for people who can pay you something like a $5, $10 YouTube channel membership or Patreon membership. Because once we have like, once we have like 500 to a thousand of you, even just doing YouTube channel memberships for like five bucks, like let's say 500 of you, we're doing YouTube channel memberships for five bucks. After YouTube takes their cut, that's about $1,800 a month. With that, I could easily do giveaways every single month and um, give a couple of people some lighting, and some microphones to improve the quality of their videos. And that's probably what we would do. If we had 500 people on the channel membership side at $500 a month, um, sorry, 500 channel members a month paying $5 a month after YouTube takes its cut, it's about $1,600, $1,800. That would be enough probably for us to justify giving away two or three microphones, some lighting kits, and maybe every other month we could give away a small vlogging camera. That would justify it. That would cover the cost of that. So that's something we're looking at. I just have to be more diligent about the content for the members only uh, folks. But um, barring that, we are going to do at least some book giveaways every month. And we can give away at least one uh, $50 to $100 microphone for sure. And a very cheap light, like maybe one of the portable lights. We could probably give away one of the $25 to $50 portable lights. So... <clears throat> Those are things we've been looking at. <clears throat> yep. 
Yep, there is a whole industry for storing your extra crap somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, my book is coming to Audible probably at the end of the year. I just need my voice to recover from being sick. Um, the goal is that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get you a hard copy. I think we still have some. Sam from Canada says, is travel content dead? No, generic travel content is dead. Generic um, travel content is dead. Um, travel content that is very thoughtful isn't dead or has a weird angle. Primary example, um, if I watch someone, um, if I, I would watch a couple travel around the world. I would watch a couple do all eight wonders of the world. I would watch a couple try to do um, around the world in 80 days as a vlog series. I would watch a couple that tried to do around the world in 80 days like Phineas Fogg, because then that's interesting because that's a couple. Um, I would watch an elderly or retired couple try to do around the world in 80 days or try to do every country. Um, I would watch that. I would watch a couple try to do 50 states in 50 days or even 50 states in 100 days or even travel the whole of the United States in one year. I would watch a couple do that. I would watch a couple do every state capital and tune in for them and see them whenever they upload. You see what I'm saying? And it's not just that I would only watch couples content. It's that that would make sense because, again, it's a unique gimmick. It's a unique angle. And there's like something like that. If I watched a couple in an RV do all 50 state capitals or all 50 states, that would be interesting. That'd be unique. You know, travel. Um, Content. Watching someone do travel content where they go to all of America's castles, that would be unique. That'd be interesting. I'd watch someone do all of America's castles. Okay. <clears throat> hey, quick question. What's the best way to make money online if you're broke? If you're broke, the first thing to do is to make sure you get a job in the real world or do gig work in the real world. Number two, if you want to make money online, the best way is to have a skill and then provide services and be a freelancer. That's what I did. When I became a full-time YouTuber, it's because I was already a full-time freelancer. So the best way to make money online if you're broke, maybe I'll make that video. Maybe I'll make that video. Best way to make money online if you're broke and watch my freelancer series. Go back, watch the old content on my channel. Just type in Roberto Break Freelance. Go to my freelance playlist and watch all my freelancing videos. Get a real skill. You want to make money online? Best way to make money online if you're broke? Have a skill. Graphic design, copywriting, uh, social media marketing, video editing. You're going to have to create proof, though, which means you're going to have to do the first five customers for free to have some testimonials, have some proof of concept. That's going to matter. And it's going to suck, but you're going to have to do that free work. You're going to do something for free anyway that makes no money. You're going to play video games. You're going to watch YouTube videos. You might as well do client work. Build a portfolio, get five to eight people, give it away for free. Then give the next couple of people, four or five people, give it to them half price. Then the next people, you give it to them 25% off. Now you have a body of work. Now you have a reputation. Now you have case studies. Now you have trust pilot testimonials. Now you can justify making more money and you can have something to sell higher and higher ticker ticket clients that have money because now there's a reason to trust you. So the thing is, you have to create value to make money. You have to create value to make money. So if you're broke, get a skill. Get a skill, then market it and sell it. Build results. The way you do it is testimonials. No such thing as get rich quick schemes. The reason people fall for get rich quick schemes is because they themselves are kind of trying to scam someone because they're trying to make money without creating any value because they don't have any skills. If you have skills, then build out your skills and make an offer around your skills. Charge for logo design, charge for graphic design, charge for print design. What I used to do, I used to do other people's book covers. I used to do other people's book covers. I used to do other people's book covers. I used to convert other people's books to eBooks. I used to build other people's websites. I used to build other people's landing pages. I used to design other people's logos. I used to make trade show material. I used to make the trade show banners and table uh, settings and banners for the booths. I used to make billboards. I used to make digital signage for people to put up their um, stuff for their store in the mall. That's what I did. And I made money. Then I edited for other people. Then I edited for other people. Affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing, you need a leads. You need audience. You need leads. You need a reputation. Like if you are asking me how to make money online, if you're broke, you're not qualified. If you're broke, if you're broke, how dare you even think about doing affiliate marketing? 
If you're broke, you're not qualified to do affiliate marketing. Why the hell should anyone buy from you if you're broke? And why are you, if you're broke, why are you recommending anyone to buy anything? Why would affiliate marketing work for you if you're broke? If you're broke, work. Build a one-person business on client services. Prove yourself by working for free. Then you have a body of work to show for yourself that demonstrates your skills. Now someone else can trust you with money. Now you have testimonials. Then you have body of work and proof. Then you charge more. Then you like stop discounting. And then you get up to full price. Then you can even start increasing your prices. And so if you're broke, you go out and get a skill if you don't have one. Around that skill... You make a compelling offer of here's why I'll deliver, here's how much it's worth, and you find people that are worth doing the work for initially for free to build your credibility because, and don't say, oh, I can't do it, or I can't afford to work for free because you can't, if you're on YouTube, you can afford to work for free. If you're on YouTube, you can afford for free. If you're on social media, you can, award for, award, uh, you can afford to work for free. If you watch Netflix, you can afford to work for free. There is nobody who can't afford to work for free unless they're already struggling and on the street somewhere. Because if you're watching, if you're on the internet, you can afford to work for free because you're already being monetized without making money. So you can afford to work for free and be a freelancer. And so you do that for five, eight rounds of doing that to build up the body of work and to have testimonials and have something to show for yourself that shows it is worth the amount you're charging. Then you make your offer. You make your offer. You make your sales page. You make your ladder page. You can't afford Kajabi. You build it on Squarespace. That's cheap. It's going to cost you, what, 150 bucks for the year? You're going to spend that on BS anyway. You're going to spend that on BS anyway. 150 bucks for the year. You get yourself your Squarespace website, hashtag not sponsored. And you make your offer. You capture your money via PayPal. You get the sale. So you have to have an offer. Then you have to have your um, landing page and sales page. And then how are you going to get people? I'm going to tell you how to get your first clients. I'm going to tell anyone here how to get their first client. What you do is for the service that you offer, you find someone that's already paying for that service. Usually you find someone who's spending ad money locally on promoting a business. You go and you show them that you can do better than the person they're already paying. And so then you offer to do it at a discounted price or you offer it for free. You either do it at a discounted price or you do it for free. And then now you proved that you can take that person they're already paying's place because you can deliver better value. You're a better value. So now you can do that. And so you keep doing that rinse and repeat. Now you have your customers. Now you have a client base. The other thing you do is you go down to your small business association. You should provide services that small business owners need. So you should provide services for small business owners because small business owners already are paying for things. They're not a broke person. They have a budget. So you find non-broke people. How do you identify non-broke people? You find small business owners at the Small Business Association. You find small business owners that are at free networking events using Eventbrite. You go and you do that. And then you find people who have ads in the mall. You find people who have ads in local billboards. You find people who still have ads in the local newspaper. You find who is buying ads locally. And then that is the person that you go and you pitch your services to. So then because they're spending money on ads, they have a budget. They can't tell you they don't have a budget. So then ultimately now these are the people. They're your prospects. These are your leads. You have to have salespersonship. So you better start reading some books and learning about sales and closing the art of negotiation. Learn to be a better communicator. You can do some of that for free on YouTube, but you should also consider buying a book on it. And so you learn how to close. You learn how to be a salesperson. And I would recommend in the real world, you get a retail job, you get a sales job, you get something like that, or you do commission sales. And so the other thing is cash flow. So yes, you're getting these clients, but you should also have a regular job. You should also consider freelancing on Fiverr to get some clients. You should also consider doing gig work. If you have a car, do gig work, do DoorDash, do Uber, make money, monetize every hour of your day that you're not sleeping monetize every hour of your day in a sleeping. You got a nine to five job, but it sucks because you're making like minimum wage. You're making 10, $15 an hour. Cool. You have your nine to five job on your weekend, on your day off, monetize that too. Zero days off or one day off. It's not forever. It's not forever. It's for now. It sounds toxic, but it's what you got to do. So zero days off. You can do that for a couple of months. You can do that for a year. You can do a year of zero days off. You still sleep. You get eight hours of sleep. You don't compromise there. 
Where you compromise is you watch less YouTube content, you watch ne less Netflix, you play less video games, you give up your hobbies, and your new hobbies are reading so that you become smarter and working out so you become stronger and you are not run down and burned out by this. So your new hobbies are working out for free or with a $20 or whatever $30 gym membership. That's your new thing. You kill all your subscriptions. You kill all your Netflix. You kill all that stuff. You kill country roll. You do all of that. You know, no more Twitch prime subs. You go and you get a $35 gym membership. Now you're building up your strength so that you can work harder, more efficiently, get a good night's sleep, balance out all of your mental health through your workout program and that you're staying in great shape. You're looking good. You're more attractive. You're easier um, to deal with in real life, that's going to make you better. Your other free time and activity, the other membership you're allowed to have is Audible so that you can get free books. I'm um, sorry, not free books, but you can get audiobooks. Or you can go to the library, get the Libby app with the library and get audiobooks for free that way. You could also get free online courses with LinkedIn Learning through the public library. So now you have the public library to make you smarter. You have books that are making you smarter. You have audiobooks, physical books, public library. That might be free. That might be cheap. So now you have that situation. Then you're learning, you're getting smarter, but I would focus on the following. Focus on learning practical technical skills, software and hardware technical skills, mostly software. Train up on something that can make you money by working with business owners, by managing a software. Learn um, the art of sales and negotiation by reading books and listening to audiobooks and learn how to do that and learn to be a better speaker and a better communicator, okay? Learn copywriting. I would learn that anyway. It's going to help you with your own marketing. Learn marketing and sales. Learn marketing, networking, sales, and negotiation, and copywriting. Those five skills automatically will put you ahead in life no matter what. So you prioritize learning that. You can learn free with LinkedIn Learning by going to the public library, and you can get audiobooks from the Libby app and eBooks from the Libby app for free by getting a library card in addition to physical books. So you do that. You go to local free events. You're not going to the club anymore. You're going to local events that are free or cheap where business people are going to be. So you're going to look that up in Eventbrite. That's what you're going to do. Um, you're going to go to local festivals so that you can be part of a pillar of your community and people can know you and like you and everything like that. Consider doing some volunteer work. That's another way to network. The, you can meet some people with money that are volunteering because that's how they give back. That's going to help you. That's going to be prospecting for leads and clients. So ultimately, um, this is what's going to build you up. It's going to build the foundation of your skills. It's going to build your network. And so that's going to be very valuable to you. Then, like I said, you want to get online. You want to build a professional personal brand. So that means your hobbies online. You're not talking about you're, you're talking about how you can help people. You're showing people how smart you are. You're getting a network. You're getting people who can give you free education, you're getting people who can vouch for you. You're getting people who can ask you smart questions or that you can learn from. So you're online your online life, the little bit of it that you're allowed to have an hour a day is still about learning and it's still about growing a network. You're not on social media to be a consumer anymore. You're on social media to build a network and to build a personal brand and connection. But that means being on x.com and that means being on linkedin.com. If you're if you're not creating content, it's not being on youtube.com um, unless you're consuming education. You're only consuming education now. Again, I know it sucks, but your entertainment, you're allowed to read fantasy books. You're allowed to read Harry Potter. You're not allowed to watch entertainment anymore. You're allowed to listen to podcasts that can help you because it's Dire of a CEO. Your entertainment podcast that I will let you and allow you is Joe Rogan as the only one I'll let you, but not all four hours of it. You get to watch me. You get to listen to clips. Okay. I'm dead ass serious about this. So this is you, what you're going to do. And you're going to do this for like two to three years and you won't be broke anymore. So you're going to spend most of your time on either activities that you can monetize or that build you and make you smarter, build your network or build your body up for you to be stronger and more attractive. And that's what your life is going to look like. And you're going to always get eight hours of sleep. You're going to prioritize eight hours of sleep. Your new consumption is always education and always bettering yourself. And it's always self-improvement. And what I will allow you as a form of entertainment is you're allowed to listen to music with no lyrics that can help you get into your flow state and meditation. So you're allowed to listen to classical music. You're allowed to listen to ambient music and you're allowed to listen to lo-fi. No more lyrics. Lyrics are dead to you. It's audiobooks, podcast, and it's lyricless music. That's what you're allowed. Those are your entertainments. It's books, physical, audio, Kindle books. Um, you're allowed to watch tutorial content. You're allowed to watch interviews of podcasts and successful people. That's your entertainment now. And your other activities and hobbies 
are working out in the gym to build up your body, build up your stamina and get your health right and set a foundation for your health for the rest of your life. And it's your reading books and it's attending networking events. And that's your life for two to three years and you won't be broken struggling anymore. You are building yourself up in the foundation of your skills. You're making yourself a high value person. You're making yourself somebody worth being around, somebody that people will um, invest in. You're doing the right things to build a network and get leads. And now you have learned to, you've learned sales, you've learned communication, you've learned copywriting, you know how to do outreach and everything. So you can close now, you're a closer now. And so you have offer, you have something to offer, you have leads to offer it to, and you know how to close the deal. That's all you need. Offer, lead, sale. That's all anyone needs. And the foundation of that, having something to offer is bent on the foundation of your skills. Having people to offer it to, you learn how to communicate and how to network and how to put yourself out there. You build a personal brand, you build a reputation, and then you deliver on that value and you ask for what you're worth and you know what that looks like because you've learned sales, marketing, and negotiation as your foundation. That's what you have to do. And that's your required reading. And that's what it would be. And again, a lot of it you can get by going to your public library You can get a lot of it from your public library. And that will be a good foundation for free. Highly recommend you get a $35, or whatever gym membership, something like anytime fitness, 24 hour fitness, something like that. Thank you, Stephen um, V Tran for the 1999 super chat. Really appreciate you. So yeah, um, you do that. You do the fitness workout stuff. That will build up your body, build up your stamina, make it easier to work harder and longer. You monetize every resource at your disposal. So that means like, again, on the weekends, you can Uber and DoorDash too and make some extra money. You can take those money and those resources. And if you don't need to immediately improve a dire situation in your life, you can invest that back into yourself. You can build and grow things with your business, like buying your website, getting a logo done for your website, getting business cards made, all those things. By making that extra money on the weekend, you can use that as the war chest to grow your business and invest back. You can use that to buy your online advertising. <clears throat> um, what are the best habits for content creators to become successful on social media? You can use a lot of what I just said, and that would be some of the best habits. One of the main ones would be growing their technical skills and also learning sales and marketing, learning how to negotiate for when they get brand deals in the future, learning how to be a good communicator, learning copywriting so they can do email outreach when they need to with brands learning more about social media and analytics and reading data would definitely be helpful. Basically, a lot of your best habits can be built on this YouTube channel. Yeah, don't forget to take care of yourself. That's why I always say you rest the eight hours a day and you also work out pretty regularly and that will um, dramatically help you. Chad says, uh, you really put out some best quality info on the best way to make money online. If someone is broke, you should definitely make a video on this. Yeah, I'm going to make a video on this because um, it would definitely matter. Yep. No more drinking at bars. No, I quit that when uh, I quit that until I started making real money again. My, I was like my friends. I was like, look, friends, um, I can only hang out with you for 30 or 90 minutes and we have to do something free, meaning I come over to the house for an hour and I can play Tekken with you guys. Um, no, I can't go out to the club tonight. Oh, we're buying, we're doing this and everything like that. Nope, can't do it. I need to rest. I need to wake up. Um, and I'm giving up alcohol. Yeah, no, I gave up alcohol. I stopped going clubbing. I stopped doing all of it when I needed to be successful when I was broke. I gave up all of those vices um, uh, for a while. And then when I made it and I felt safe and I felt comfortable, then um, I called back up my friends and you know, and then we'd go out for a while and everything until I moved away. Um, Tekken Entrepreneur says, should you go to film school and business school to be a successful content creator or business owner, or is that overrated and outdated? If you're not from a privileged background or you didn't get grades that because you were a brainiac that would let you do it on scholarship, it's completely pointless to do. If you're going to opt for anything, it would be business school as a backup plan and a safety net to go out and get a traditional job. The only reason to go get a degree as a content creator, unless it's a degree in engineering or physics or something like that. Um, Cause here's the thing. If you were going to go for engineering or physics, I would do that and then become a content creator because then you can be an inventor and you can be Simone Yurtz or you could be um, Mark Rober. So if you can go for physics and engineering, go to college. If you can go into STEM, if you can go into STEM, go to college. 
Okay. If you go into STEM and you can do that, then go to college. If you go to college and you're going to learn to be a programmer so that you can build a creator economy app and be a content creator, then that makes sense. And you can do that. <clears throat> If you're going to go and you're going to go into medical and then you can retire from it like Ali Abdal or you could keep doing it and leverage it like uh, Dr. Mike, then it makes sense. If you're going to go to college, you go for STEM. You use that. You leverage your traditional job and career credential to give you authority as a content creator and you don't become purely entertainment. You do an edutainment play. You do an edutainment play. And you don't just be a vapid entertainer. You do an edutainment play where you can get the edu the entertainment side of the lowest common denominator, but you can leverage your authority of being a white collar professional. So if you go to college to be a content creator, you don't go to college to be a content creator and do film or business. You go into STEM, you get a white collar job, and then you leverage doctor, surgeon, accountant, lawyer to give you credibility in YouTube that no one can compete with. And then you leverage that credential, and then you get to be Emily D. Baker, Legal Eagle, Ali Abdal, Dr. Mike, Mark Rober, Simone Yurtz. Physics girl, you get to be that. So what you do is you go into STEM. You go into STEM. You then get the job. You don't go into content creation by itself. You get the job. You leverage the authority of your title and your background to then make the content because now no one can compete with you because of the groundwork that the authority and the title gives you. So that's how you would do that. And you learn the rest through books, courses, training, trial and error, in-person workshops. That's how you will learn video production. Best way to learn video production is to go to an in-person workshop where someone can get hands-on with you with the camera. Besides learning online and great books from Scott Kelby, you want to go somewhere in person and learn about cameras. Maybe go to Shutterfest, which Sal Sincata does in, um, I think they do it in St. Louis. You go to Shutterfest, and it's a great video and photography community. It's a $300 weekend. And you go to Shutterfest and you get to learn hands-on about lighting and cameras and all the tech hands-on for a three-day weekend. And it's a phys it's physical in-person workshops. That's been the best ways to learn about cameras and lighting and all the things, okay? In-person workshops. Um, if you can't hire someone to teach you in person, you go to an in-person workshop. That's one of the best ways. You can learn some of it online if you're smart or from books. So that's how you will learn about the camera side. As for the filmmaking thing, the best online course for it is probably full-time filmmaker. Uh, full-time filmmaker is probably the best online course for learning filmmaking and cinematography and also the business side of it. <clears throat> so then you'd learn that skill. You could also use maybe some stuff in Skillshare to supplement that or even LinkedIn learning, but I would argue that full-time filmmaker is probably worth it. But if you're on a budget, you learn with Skillshare or you learn with LinkedIn learning and you can do the LinkedIn learning through the public library, like I said. Um, so you can do that. Okay. And then that would give you at least the foundations of those skill sets for learning content creation, in YouTube itself. You would use myself, think media, film booth, Nick Nimmin, um, and think media, Nick Nimmin, film booth, me, who else can I recommend? Um, Daniel Battelle, for editing in DaVinci Resolve since DaVinci Resolve is free and um, Harris Heller. And then for learning audio, Mike Russell, and then for recommendations on audio gear, podcastage. So the, that would be your study guide for that. For online business, you would learn from Chris Doe and Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income for online business. Um, and me, obviously. So that would be kind of your curriculum for that side of it. And so um, that would be your study guide for being a successful content creator. Or you can just join awesomecreatoracademy.com. So, yeah. So that would be, that'd be what you'd do. Uh, working out at home is free, but you won't be motivated to do it as much as if you get a $35 gym membership. The $35 gym membership is for actually a couple of reasons. One, you will be more motivated to do it if you do it in person around people too. You will learn to make 
friends with people at the gym and the staff there. It will break you out of your shell. It will make you less uh, um, introverted. It will help you with your socialization and that will help with sales skills much later. And that will be important. Number three, if you're at the gym and you start making friends, that's another opportunity to network with people who are taking their life seriously. You'll see a lot of people at the gym, probably older people even, and those people will be at the gym, but they'll also be business owners. So then there's an, um, an access point through the gym to building the network as well, as far as serious people, depending on what community or neighborhood you live in. So that's like a very good idea to do the gym membership. You don't just do the gym membership to work out. You do it because of the opportunity to network, to socialize, to build more people skills and because you'll be more motivated to do it and you'll be more consistent at it. <clears throat> so that's why you join the gym. How do you use vidIQ, social blade and two buddy analytics? Are they required for success? Um, again, tools augment success. They accelerate success and they make things more convenient. They're required depending on who you are and what your limitations are. You can use the free versions of all of them and see how far you can get. Now, again, I also have some free training on TubeBuddy here on the channel. Eventually, I'm going to make a TubeBuddy guide, a vidIQ guide, a StreamYard guide. Those will be coming probably sometime next year. Um, so that's um, like I tell you how to use them. And I did the whole two buddy guide, but again, you can use the free versions of them. And then when you make money back, you can reinvest into the paid versions. Uh, knock Talon says, even if it sounds like Roberto is going hard on this, you can tell he's genuine and kind. Unlike some people out there that says not to work so hard. I personally hate that. Yeah. Telling people not to work hard is going to hurt them more than telling them to work hard is. <coughs> Yeah, you got a bad habit of drinking on the weekends. It's football season. Uh, ditch um, soda and carbonated drinks. Go to water. Um, go to water. If you go carbonated drinks, go ginger ale. Um, do not um, drink alcohol anymore. I've actually covered a uh, premier adventure. I've actually covered people who have a nine to five job. Um, if they're not super, super, super broke, I've actually done a video about how to do YouTube when you um, have a full-time job. I did a whole video about that um, and I address it very, very specifically. One of the things is if you don't have a good place to film is again, to go to the library, get one of the meeting rooms and then you have a quiet place to film where no one's going to bother you. So if you have a nine to five job and you have a family, that's a really good idea. It's a really good idea if you have a nine to five job and a family to go get a meeting room at the library. It's free and you can film there and then you can do your content. But I did a whole thing on content creation when you have a full time job. How long did it take me to get 600K subs? Uh, 1600 videos and 10 years. Uh, it would be a million, but I took a lot of breaks during the pandemic. Thoughts on buying monetized channels? Nope, I don't believe in it most of the time because I can't guarantee the history of the channel and that the channel won't get deleted later by YouTube. <coughs> uh, two, three years of hustling ain't bad. Heck, pandemic was three years ago. Seems like yesterday. Facts. Yep, Ali Abdal is a genius. Absolutely. Um, school, business school for backup plan, but being an entrepreneur requires taking risk and school is playing it safe. Uh, to a degree, it's not that school is playing it safe. It's that the way that predatory student loans work and interest rate works and the lack of job guarantees and how much of it requires experience, if it's not just an institution that you go into, it basically makes college a scam. That's why I said don't even worry about business school. I'm telling you, if you're going to go to college, just go into STEM. The reason you go into STEM is because if you get a degree in medical, for example, it's institutions. So the thing is, you have to, they have to hire someone with the medical school background if you go into STEM, right? 
And um, to a degree, the same thing with certain technical jobs. They have to hire people directly who have the college certification for and the engineering degree to be able to do that sort of stuff. So that's why you hire the engineering thing. Same thing for the coding side of it on the tech side. So you have to hire the computer science major. Um, you have to as a, as a certain company. You have to hire the engineer and physics person. You have to. You have to hire the mathematics person. The reason you do science, technology, engineering, uh, math, medical is because it's tied directly to the institutions that are regulated. So the regulated institutions have to hire people with those degrees, which means that there's a pathway to a guaranteed good salary. That's the only reason you do it. And that's the backup plan. And that's the only guarantee to make college worth it. If you do not go into one of those fields, college is basically a scam unless you got there on scholarships and you don't have to pay tuition or your parents were already rich. College is a scam. It is a straight up scam if you are not getting there on free ride. If college is not a free ride for you, it is a scam. Unless you go into STEM, unless you go into STEM, STEM is the only thing worthwhile to do it. A liberal arts degree is bullshit and it's a scam unless you're privileged or unless you're going to work for the college. And that's just a Ponzi and that's just a Ponzi. So college is a scam straight up. And I know it makes you sound like a fake guru to say it. I'm tired of everyone calling everyone who says college is a scam is a fake guru. Everyone knows the college is a scam now. That's why it's a trillion dollar student loans and everyone wants it to be forgiven now because they know they got scammed. It's that simple. Oh, well, no, the statistics say that people make this much more if they go to college. Take all of the privileged people who came from the top 20% out of that equation, only vet for people who went to college who came from a working class family or a lower middle class family. And then all of a sudden, the data ain't as favorable for college in terms of those people making more money. Those people who make more money on average, it's the elites that skew the average on that. That's where people, that's the scam they run is they know how to market. And I know that they're scamming and doing it through false marketing and advertising because I worked in marketing and advertising. I know exactly how they could obfuscate the truth and it can be technically true, but it'd be entirely misleading. So they use the averages of the oh, of the people who make more money because they went to college. The average is skewed by the people who already came from elite families to begin with. And that's why they all also bribe people. You saw the college admission scandals. That's why they bribe people to get their kids in this college. So it's a merit badge. It's a status symbol. College is a brand name and a status symbol now. So unless you go into STEM, unless you go into STEM, STEM is the valid thing to go into. Other than that, people should consider going to the trades. They should go to community college or they should, again, work hard and get the scholarship for free. And then they can go and get a liberal arts education if they want to. But it's really not worth much. You, 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 you need the STEM because that's the thing that would actually make sense and would pay. And it also, even as a content creator and an entrepreneur, will give you leverage. So that's why you would do it. And that's why it would make sense to do it. So um, that's, the, um, that's the thing that you would want. Not the business degree. The business degree means nothing. Uh, people have MBAs and they still pay me. People have MBAs and they still pay me. And I make on average more than the average MBA in America anyway. And I dropped out of community college. So again, it's not worth much. Now, granted, I was already smart. I was already smart. But I did have to work hard because of my background. I had to work hard. So I thankfully was smart because that's what allows me to overcome my background. So ultimately, again, um, if you were going to network, yeah, you pick. You, if you were going to network, you would get into um, pickleball, racquetball, tennis, golf, swimming, tennis, golf, swimming, pickleball, racquetball, um, horseback riding, lacrosse. Those are the things for sports and athletics that allow you for the highest tier of networking with high net worth individuals. With high net worth individuals, it's golf, tennis, picket, pickleball, racquetball, uh, and swimming, um, equestrian sports, uh, so horseback riding. Um, those would be the things that you would want to do to get in with the more affluent crowd when it comes to athleticism. Absolutely. And to a degree... Um, gym and weightlifting, like to a degree. Um, that's what ultimately does it. Uh, possibly marathon and triathlon. If you want to really suffer, then yes, that too. Um, but that'd be your networking. Uh, but you could also just literally go to um, business events and to your small business association.
Um, I news Notion a little bit. A lot of our project management is through Slack nowadays. <clears throat> Paul asks, does your membership help with the deriving content? I think you're talking about the ideation process. In tech, 30 plus issue having niche on YouTube without breaching disclosure agreement at work. Yeah, with our... um. You've been in tech 30 plus years. Okay, yeah. So we do help with the ideation process. We cover some of that in the office hours. We have training around it, but you can ask specific questions with me in the office hours. So the thing is, that could be something that you either do in the academy with us in office hours twice a week, or if you hired me one-on-one, -on -one, I could work out a lot of that with you and uh, figure out your situation. So um, that would be a thing. Um, shout out to uh, Ruben from back in the day. Appreciate you, Ruben. Um, my audio should be fine. Uh, thoughts on using business credit cards or taking out business loans for your social media career? Absolutely not. I'm against it. Uh, I'm completely against it when you're not profitable already. No, I do not believe in taking out the business credit cards or the loans. The most I will allow anyone to do with credit cards is if they get like an Amazon or Best Buy card and they go 1500 for the camera, microphone, lights, setup, basic setup but nothing more than that. That's the most I will think is if you get like a Best Buy credit card to go that far, maybe if you take out 800 for the laptop or something like that. But no, it's just like a small amount under 2000, 2500 on Best Buy or Amazon credit card is the most I would even entertain. I'm more, I'm like Dave Ramsey about it. Like, no. And I don't believe I'm taking out no small business loan for your social media career. Absolutely not. Not if you're not um, profitable and cash flow positive. No, 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 no. Yep, you need a plan in life. A degree is not a plan. I couldn't agree more. Yep, yep, golf is definitely one of those moves, 100%. <clears throat> yep. What are your suggestions for when your channel just gets stuck? I had good growth, but now it seems that things are kind of stuck. I would study who is successful in your niche currently and why. I study and I look at who and what is successful in my niche and why all the time. I've noticed that in my niche, there's like not a lot of videos that are popping off in my niche. So I'm okay with that. And I'm just like, okay, I'll just do uh, pure education. I'll do deep dive live streams. I'll hang with my community. We'll do the super chats. We'll do channel reviews. I'll make the how-to content the way that I want to. Um, again, doing the new setup in the basement. We'll do all the things. And so, yeah, I just... Um, I'm like, okay, I'll grind it out and then something will click and then it'll do that. So um, being consistent, you don't need things to pop off all the time. Sometimes it's just the season. Sometimes it's just the season, but study other people in your niche. Look at what's being successful there. Look at ways you could innovate and then just go from there. Anyway, I think that that's a good place to bookmark it. We've gone for two and a half hours. Um, I think um, a lot of you didn't necessarily have a lot of questions about the membership and stuff. And I think I covered quite a bit in the first hour, hour and a half around the memberships. And I, I think I covered the most important things. Um, but if you guys have questions, we can always do another one. Um, I'll probably do another backend thing where I teach the online business side for digital product creation. For like I said, for those of you who are thinking about memberships, consider getting a, a trial of Kajabi. It is linked in the description down below. That is a free trial, but it does help me out if you use my link. It is an affiliate link. They are not a sponsor. Our sponsor today is StreamYard. But um, yeah, I, I do think that for a lot of you, that building memberships, this could help you. It also helps if you're building digital products, online coaching or courses. 
So do keep that in mind. And what I will tell you is, like I said, I've been using this thing for like five, six years. It's done very well for me. You've seen it um, from my dashboard and I can answer questions you have about it. At some point before the end of the year, we will do a stream on digital product sales because some of you may not qualify to do memberships, but some of you would be qualified to make digital download products, um, whether that's courses or templates or something else. So at some point we will run you through digital products and courses. At some point I will do a training for those of you who want to start coaching businesses. Some of you are trainers already. Some of you are educators, some of you are physical trainers. A uh, coaching business built on Kajabi could be very lucrative for you. So you could use it that way. And I'll show you how I built my um, business to six figures a year. And I've been doing that for over five years now. Um, I think we started doing Awesome Creator Academy seriously at the very end of like November of 2017. We've definitely been doing it since 2018. Um, so that's been very successful and yeah, happy to share. And like I said, it's a no code tool. That's the really good thing. Uh, what's my niche? My niche is uh, creator economy. So it's basically helping online content creators. So basically that's me, Daniel Patel, um, to a degree you could look at, um, streamer Harris Heller, um, Sean Cannell, uh, Nick Nimmin, Daryl Eves that, um, you know, vid IQ and tube buddy technically. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh ed from film booth obviously jay klaus um justin moore so that's our crew yep you'd be down for the digital download products training yep absolutely jacked and stacked is in the creator academy and says it's super helpful appreciate you man yeah we actually have a couple of people who've come through the stream who are or have been academy members in the past um yep in fact actually tomorrow because i'm going to a public youtube um well not public youtube event but like i'm doing an in-person youtube event here in atlanta Tomorrow, I'm going to that from another creator. We're actually going to do Awesome Creator Academy early tomorrow um, instead of our usual 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to do it earlier in the day, probably around like 3 or 4, because um, I'm going to go to a public YouTube event. So I'm not public. Again, an in-person YouTube event. Why am I saying public? It's in person. So, yep. But thank you to everybody who showed up. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, um you know, Eric, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Rosalind. Appreciate all of you. All right. Um, we're going to end the stream and we're going to end it with the, we're going to end it with the, I'm just anti-debt, by the way. The reason I don't believe in taking out the loans, I'm anti-debt. I'm like, again, I'm like Dave Ramsey stuff. I'm like anti-debt. I'm just anti, anti, anti-debt. And I've known too many creators who went tens of thousands of dollars into debt and weren't able to pay it off. So I'm against debt. But yeah, we're going to end the stream with the book trailer for my book, Create Something Awesome, linked in the description down below. Um, we also got some great products, like I said, over at Awesome Creator Academy. We even have some affordable products. So make sure you're checking that out. Make sure you're supporting StreamYard. Uh, get a free trial. Support the sponsor. Free trial. We also got free trial for Kajabi for you. So check out the links. They're all down below. Check out my book. Stay awesome. I will catch you next time. I finally did it. I finished my book, Create Something Awesome, How Content Creators Are Profiting From Their Passion in the Creator Economy. The book is available now in paperback and in Kindle where you can read it on any e-reader or device. And I'm really excited about this. The audiobook is coming soon, probably October 2022. Oh my God, it's so great to be able to have this book done put it up on the bookshelf and to know that all of you who appreciate it, you want to hear what I have to say about the creator economy, becoming a full-time content creator and what the experience and lifestyle of being a content creator actually is like. Uh, this is the book. I, I put 20 chapters in here of the most important things I think that content creators could be focusing on today. I talk about the mental health aspect of being a content creator, uh, getting discouraged, imposter syndrome, not charging what you're worth, and mostly actionable advice around monetizing your content properly, but also how to build an audience on your authenticity and what it's really like to start from zero, even today.
So if you're interested, make sure you're checking out the book. You can order it on Amazon. You also probably order it in a lot of other places like Barnes and Noble, and it will be coming to other bookstores soon. Really excited about it. Thank you for all the support and love around the book and the positive reviews. Now go ahead and pick it up and make sure you go out there and create something 